Time for Type 40. We're your live stream Doctor Who magazine show. The live stream Doctor Who magazine show materialising here again on YouTube, Rumble and on Facebook. And with the uh, the coverage of Doctor Who's 60th anniversary here kicking off, going up a gear or two in one way or another over the last 24 hours as of time of recording. We've got a live chat out there. I know hungry for our takes on that uh, new slice of Doctor Who action, all new Doctor Who action that we got yesterday. We'll come to all of that soon, I promise. This is Doctor Who's 60, 60th anniversary year, of course it is, and we promised so much over the next two to, two to three weeks in brand new on-screen adventures and all those extraneous uh, supporting materials too that are across ra- radio and television that we went through on the last edition of the show. So the, the starting pistol has well and truly gone gone off. What else has gone off here? We're going to find out on this edition of the show. Whichever time stream or time zone you're joining us from, welcome as always. Uh, we're in front of a live chat full of friends, fans and companions just like you. And uh, I'm Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. We're going to bring you as much, uh, as many opinions as we can and some quotes, some takes and asides and things that maybe you might or might not have spotted from that five minutes of Doctor Who content just yesterday. I noticed we've got lots of comments already. Keep them coming. Let's let's keep it up. Please like the video now, subscribe to the channel, and hit the cloister bell to get all the notifications about what we're doing next and when we're doing it. This is a, a Type 40 Live weekend. I think this is the first one we've done on a weekend for at least a year, maybe even longer. So it does feel a bit strange, but I'm sure that we'll uh, we'll get each other on the right page in in time okay who have we got first i'm happy to say thank heaven she's here starry-eyed girl sarah graham keep me on track <laughs> hello <laughs> uh god i'm gonna have my uh, work cut out today aren't i tall order tall it's order, tall yeah. order but i'm up to the challenge and you know and i've got a brilliant support <laughs> as well, so. <laughs> all a support network rather aren't we i noticed okay. one of your pudsy bears has gone walk about from the other day has he walked off in disgust <laughs> What's going on? oh yeah no no easy yeah um <laughs> he should be shouldn't he? i should i should do a symbol yes this is the david tennant one yeah hey, there he is um, good stuff yeah i'll put him there Fabulous. Uh, yes. I don't, yeah, don't want to get into spoilers just yet because we know we're bringing no, it on, No, no. We've got a I lot to get stuck into. This is the bit where we that. get... I'm going to lay him down. Is that symbolic enough? <laughs> this is the bit where we get all cosy in the console room, isn't it? And I thought we'd seen the last of this fucking thing. Ah! <laughs> so let's yeah. get rid of that and get onto something. Oh, that's a bit nicer. Oh, that's something... much better. <sighs> it's still it's still got an orange glow, but it's very much yeah. on the underside, isn't it? It's a lot a lot softer. You can imagine biting into that, courtesy of uh, M Morris seventy one out there on Twitter who, who sent us that. Speaking of Jaffa cakes, I would imagine that he's if we can get him to put one down for long enough. Ian David Diaz, the mega geek, will have a lot to say on this edition of Type Forty Live as well. No, particularly no. if he's sorry about you. that. <laughs> Hello, <Rumor. laughs> good sorry. to see you. Well, good to hear you yeah. eventually. Yeah. Sorry, oh. yeah, yeah. I'm so, my camera's still busted. I, I really I must apologize. Um, uh, but hopefully, I'll be getting a new computer. Oh, soon. no, no. Oh, hello, yeah. Jaffa Cakes. Um, yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we don't, uh, we don't need the we, we get it. We don't need the disclaimer all the time. It's quite yeah. all right. See, because we know you, it's all perfectly fine. Oh, uh, uh, how's your day been here? <laughs> it's been okay, uh, yeah, it's been all right. Um, I've, I've been editing most of the day and uh. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking after mum as well. So yeah. Oh, you gotta go. look after, yeah, look after look your mum. Oh, mom. he's a good yeah. boy. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. It's it's getting colder, isn't it? It's getting colder out there. The weather yeah. and yeah. and all that. We can really feel the the winter kicking in. But uh, fortunately, hmm. fortunately, Doctor Who's coming back to the screens properly in a week's time for the first of those new specials. So uh, with a bit of luck, with a bit of luck, we'll have something to take us through to to Christmas. But, uh, you know, we'll we'll see, I suppose. We shall yeah. see. Who else have we got? We have, uh, yeah, another one of the regulars. She's here. We've got Queen Charlotte Shields back on deck as well. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Mm. Um, Hello. There in the end. Coming on today. It only seems like a couple of days since we last did this, Charlotte. 
It does. It does feel a bit odd to be at the weekend. I, I, it definitely feels a little bit like we shouldn't be here. <laughs> you don't look happy. Be here. But the problem is that we all have this. <laughs> we all have the same problem. We all have a small obsession with with Doctor Who. So how could we not race back to the webcams and the mics with our hot hottish takes? on everything that's been kicking off in the last day or so. This kind of starter course for all new Doctor Who, I'd, I'd like to think. Uh, we've also got up our uh, real-time traveller too. I'm not sure what time in the morning it is for Matt Pot in Tasmania, but he's here nonetheless, and he's he's dressed. Well, he's got his hat on, which I think counts <laughs> when it comes to Matt. It's a plus. <laughs> yes, I've got hey, my hat Matt. On. Hello. Hello. Good morning. morning. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. <laughs> Yes, it's about uh, 7 a.m. here, so... Mm. We've got a different angle. We've got right up your nose this time. It's, it's good oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I thought I'd copy Charlotte this time around, so, yeah. <laughs> well, she I'm used to do laptop. that. I'm not like that anymore, Matt. Yeah, she, she used to do that, but now, now yeah, she doesn't. Oh, it's nice to little... tell you feel, though. Yeah, oh. it's not going back. <laughs> It's, uh, it's all going, all, all the kerfuffle, all the kerfuffle already. Matt, are you very aware of uh, of the event, the annual event, Children in Need Night, where you are? Or is it just that thing that British people do when the nights start drawing in? I mean, well, it's, it's never mentioned over here. The first time I ever actually ever heard of it was um, when, when they had the announcement for, that uh, there was Dimensions in Time. And um, that was like, what the hell is this? You know, it's just like, oh, it's just, don't worry, it's not, it's, it's not normal Doctor Who. It's, it's a charity <laughs> event. And I'm like, oh, okay, what, what is that? You know, and I, it wasn't until the time of YouTube that we actually found out what Children in Need was all about. We don't have these sort of charity runs at all here in Australia. Oh, okay. So on, on, on TV anyway. So yeah, it's I, a bit I weird. Did. I did wonder because I think we said the other day they have a version of Red Nose Day in the states. Well, the, oh, the we do, were, we do, but not. You got one of those as so well. much on TV, no. <laughs> so the press, the press release went out from the BBC press office the other day, and this is what they, this is how they announced it all: from a Doctor Who treat featuring David Tennant to Tinky Winky and a whole host of puppets. In the Master Chef kitchen, there's a lot happening for Children in Need's TV spectacular across BBC One and BBC iPlay. We've got a, a montage there for some of the presenters. I can I can name more oh, one of them. Uh, so we've got the presenters there with the 14th Doctor and Tinky Winky. So my first instinct from that is at least the Doctor got top billing. I think if Tinky Winky had got top billing, there might have been hell to pay. But that's how they announced it. Uh, how it all ended up playing out i don't know i haven't watched the thing in years uh it got to be much of a muchness for me but there you go so we've got somebody else to bring on as well this is a, a new playmate who's joined us on a few videos lately i'm happy to say and uh, so we've, we've dragged him we've wrangled him back on in, in for his first live stream excuse me i just noticed we've got two people turn off so he's in for his first live stream and uh, the thing i like about john yulden is that he spells his name exactly the same way that third doctor does John Pertwee. Hi, John. Welcome, welcome to the live oh, show. Yeah. You'll have to ask my <laughs> parents if they were involved in the name. Uh, they could have. Were, you, were your parents Doctor Who fans, mate? Uh, a little bit, but uh, they were. Dad, dad worked for the BBC, so uh, I didn't have a choice. I had to watch Doctor Who when I was. Uh, oh, I see. A time company top. man. Yeah. You you <laughs> never watched you never watched the Light Channel in your house, then, mate. No. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a dirty word. <laughs> yeah. Well, relax and enjoy yourself. We've got a lot to get stuck into on this edition of the show. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, as always. Speaking of which, <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if he's listening or not. <laughs> I think he is, actually. Hello, mate. Yes, we've got one other person to bring in. Now, this guy, I think you'll know exactly, exactly who he is. He's got the most famous a beard in geekdom and more action figures usually on his wall than the TARDIS has got Randalls. This time I've no idea where he is, but I'm just very oh, happy no. to to, uh, to materialise to you into our company, Gary Beekler from nerdrotic.com. Hello. It's my first live stream too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in Wisconsin. <laughs> So you you Brits might know much might not mo know much about Wisconsin unless you watched Love Actually. It's it's pretty accurate uh, their depiction of Wisconsin. Okay. So yeah, hi everybody, what a day! 
Yeah. yeah. What? 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, we, we can hear. hear. I, I, this echo, I can, I can hear, hear me twice. twice. Really? Yeah. yeah. Is it because of me? It might, it might be. be. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe that Gary B. Could have spooned it. I know, right? <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> it's, good to be back. it's good to be back. How's that? Is that better? That's far, That's far better. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Oh, oh maybe, maybe not. not. I, don't I don't know what that, that is. is. Why have we got an echo? <laughs> it's the <laughs> Time Lord's mind link. It is. <laughs> there shouldn't be an echo. <laughs> well, well, hang on. I can tell if it's me or not. Okay. Hello. Hello. It is you. It's, it's sort of that out. out. I'll, remind I'll remind you. you. If you'd li- if you uh, if you'd like to like this video, please. It does help more than you think. Really helps the algorithm. Please like the video now. Subscribe to the channel. Check you're still subscribed and hit the cloister bell to get all the notifications from us about what we're doing next and when we're doing it. So before we get into the main event, what I like to do, Gary, I, I think you probably like to do the same sort of thing. Anybody out there who makes content of any kind, Matt, you know, we like to look out there, don't we, onto social media to gauge what's going on and to see what is trending across social media platforms as regards to Doctor Who. So I had a little look yesterday, and uh, this is what it said. So we've got um, Doctor Who, Disney Plus, Defund the BBC, and Eddie Izzard. That's a curious mix isn't it should that do you think that is telling sarah do you think that's indicative of where the general mood may be at this moment in time uh just a bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, obviously the 14th doctor does look a bit knocked a little bit knocked there but um results obviously may vary things may change but i can't this is the thing though isn't it because children in need night it is a little bit controversial because obviously the children in need is the bbc's registered charity And there's been a certain amount of controversy with it over the last few years. So lots of people have different opinions about that. Do you do you uh, have Red Nose Day and telethons in the states, Gary? What what sort of events like that do you have? No, I have to steal all those. Is it still (laughs) echoing? No, 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 yes, it is. No, 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 it's not. Oh, yes, yes, it is. I'm going to back out and come back in and then ask me that question again. Okay, so uh, it's the main event in a week's time as of recording. The Doctor Who event series begins Saturday, the 25th of November on BBC One and Disney Plus with the first of those three specials that's the star beast starring david tennant catherine tate yasmin finney and beep the meep and heaven knows who else will be there of course we will but for now we're looking at the very first on-screen adventure of the 14th doctor mr david tennant we've been joined by people there in the live chat on youtube a rumble and on facebook i think we should go and just check in and see what ha- what's happening with them and see if we can sort of bring any of them back from the brink charlotte let's go and check it out that was very out, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to have him. <laughs> you want to break the news to him, or should I? Where wow, we're in early, I'm sat with all people are getting straight into the weeds here on on this. We've got ahoy, shipmates from Crimpling to Bloom, though. Thank you, Crimpling to Bloom. All your all the other comments, all the opinion stuff will come to that later on. We're going to talk a little bit about what we what we saw first, then we'll cover all the content. Ahoy, ahoy, shipmates. Who else is here? We have Robert Payne. Says evening, everyone. Good evening to you, Robert. And we've got Lol here from Rebecca Gold. That's you, mate. That's you. That's me. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. From you, Sarah. That's from you. Me. <laughs> Penny Lane. Yeah, and we have, uh, we have, who's this? Philip King, who says, hi, everybody, and good evening. What a ridiculous day it's been. Tell us about your day, Philip. What's it been like? Nightmare traffic, was it? I don't know. Wait and see. Maybe it was something he saw. A couple of interesting comments as well. We'll we'll come to those later, too. We'll do the meet and greets. We'll do the meet and greets first. Uh, who else? Oh, everybody's getting into the big, the big questions. Michael says hello, everyone. Hello, Michael. Happy to have you here. And uh, evening all from Woodhouse One Two Two, who says this should be an interesting live stream. It, it should, it should Woodhouse. indeed. They're always interesting. I don't know what you mean. 
<laughs> Happy Scorpio, everyone from T Dwarf Productions. Thank you, Tom. Good to have you back as well. And who else is here? A few more rolling in. A grumpy old Bob's in. Hello, everyone. Oh, that's not that grumpy for you, Bob. You have to sw- turn it up a little bit. Oh, up the up the grumpiness a little. And uh, who? Are- here we go from garbage. Hi, garbage. And who are oh, you? Yeah, I think we're having. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. We've got an evening space bookers here from Raymond Williams. And lots more, lots more coming up besides there. Hello, folks from Darren M. The chat is jumping already. That's usually a good sign. Usually a good sign. And uh, Robert Payne, he says it's more of a bucket than a slice <laughs> of the action. <laughs> he's, mm. he's back. Gary's back. I'm afraid to talk. Yeah. Yes. Oh. It did. It worked. It worked. <laughs> How have you been anyway, Gary? What time what time of day is it there for you now? It's uh two nineteen PM. It's in the afternoon. It's a lovely afternoon here in Wisconsin. Did uh, you sleep well? I After- slept great. <laughs> well, we may face that once like we get a, stuck into this. Oh, of course. Was, I got yeah. into this. I, I watched I we should have watched it on Friday night tights. We just didn't have time. So I watched uh uh what was sent to me. And uh, no, I don't see any of the red nose days stuff, red nose day mm-hmm. stuff. I, I have to like watch it on YouTube afterwards or find a way to uh, a very creative way to get on uh, iPlayer uh, if it's even on there. Uh, creative, I like it. It is an iPlayer, it is. Yes, I hey, I have an iPlayer account. You, you'll be pleased to know, Gary, that um, it's also there for a full 12 months, so you can watch it over and over and over again. Mate. Oh, I can't wait. To, uh, <laughs> We've got Michael in the live chat. Disney Plus, so. <laughs> We've got Michael in the live chat who says, hello, Dan and Sarah. Sarah wearing black for, for the occasion. I, I am, yes. It's, it's very apt. <laughs> We've got Matt Pop back as well here. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, lots of people. I'm uh, Frank is into Frank Kronogue, who says, I'm eating a Jaffa cake. Good I'm eating man. Jaffa cakes right now. Why not? Good man. Good man. Is there ever a time, Ian, that's not Jaffa Cake time? No. Yeah, Jaffa Cake time is every time. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Keep oh, the comments. Well, Gary doesn't Everybody. even know what Jaffa Cake is. <laughs> no. We'll send you some, Gary. We'll send okay. you some. <laughs> they Sarah's are... very good at sending like, food and stuff, aren't you, Sarah? <laughs> this is uh... Jaffa Cake. Oh, that there was go. pretty good. Looks like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're soft on the one side and slightly harder on the other. Oh, yeah. That's what people say about like... me. <laughs> <laughs> who else? Who else is here? Vanessa Law's in as well. Hi, Vanessa. Great to see you here. And uh, lots of comments too from Doc Martin, armchair time traveler. How's everyone doing? How are you doing, Matt? Doc's asking. This is just for you, I think. Well, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm halfway. <laughs> <laughs> I see. It's going to be one of those streams, isn't it? Yeah. Comments coming, everybody. We're happy to have you. We're happy to have you here. We're going to get stuck into the into the meat of it right now. Of course, we are. Uh, uh, Atom Atom Mirabalis is here as well. Thank you, Atom. And uh, we've just got an OMG from Garbage. Not sure what what that is? Maybe he's caught himself in his flies. I don't know. Uh, That's how we all feel. Hi, Highland. No way. Gary's here. So obviously a fan of yours there, Gary. Yeah. Turn up. Good stuff. And uh, Robert Payne says, my sister-in-law is from Wisconsin. There you go. It's a small world. I thought that was from World War One. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like it, doesn't it? W1. <laughs> echo, 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 echo. Okay. Oh, we've got, we've got Paul's world of stuff here as well. I know who that is. Good to see you here, Paul. Hope you're keeping well, mate. It's been a long time. Sit back and relax. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, Gary says, says our mate Mike, talking about people we haven't seen for a while. Mike's in the live chat as well. Uh, Mike from Clobber in Times, a.k.a. Clobby. And the Hi, chat Clubby. is jumping. If the chat's jumping this much, that's usually a sign, Sarah, that I ought to move on, isn't it? It is, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. So when we last saw the Doctor, the Doctor was bursting into flames, which made a lot of us pretty damn happy at the time particularly when we saw the the next face that he was sporting was was this one david tennant as the 14th doctor 
We've spent the last 12 months sort of uh, clenching our fists and our buttocks, waiting for some inkling of what this all-new era would bring, obviously with Bad Wolf Productions, Disney+, Plus, Sony, and BBC Studios, all in the mix. It's been, I think it's been an up and down 12 months because partly because of the culture war that never seems to end gary i you know you know a little bit about that don't you yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it never seems to end sometimes i think it's been artificially extended other times i just have my head in my hands but what keeps us coming back to this topic every single time sarah it's simply it's simply this why do we keep the faith sarah why do we keep the faith it's for the love of who of course it is. That's what brings us here to Type 40 Live every single time. We appreciate your comments in the live chat. Please keep them coming. This is going to be a dicey one. As always, we're go you're going to get our undiluted, unapologetic opinions here for better or for worse and as balanced as we can possibly make them. It's a heady time for Doctor Who. We love it as much as you do, but we never pull our punches on this show. You know that. So, yeah, in enjoy the ride. Okay. Where are we going? Where are we going next? Oh yeah, I've got to remind you of this. Click the button. Click the buttons. Like and like subscribe. And subscribe. Click the buttons. Click the buttons. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so Doctor Who and Children in Need have enjoyed this really long association through much of the last 40 years, and, oh. and some some of the dalliances in between the two <coughs> brands are more fondly remembered than others, it's fair, it's fair to say. Uh, but with the series now returning to regular production and in the hands of a showrunner who in the past has really cleverly and effectively brought us uh, dedicated mini episodes of our, of our favourite show, I think a lot of people had every reason to expect... Expect success. Expect something really nourishing, and and fun. Uh, the the recent confirmation there would be this mini episode, a mini sode as we've gotten accustomed to calling them after after a gap of so many years. Sarah, it did send a smile across all of our faces here on Type Forty, didn't it? Because we when we look back, we think of we think of time crashes, don't we? And Bridge Street Market next to Albert Square, or there was uh, mine probes and bus stops and death zones and all that kind of thing. So it's been a happy a happy association. Well, yeah, and obviously, you know, back in two thousand and five, we had, you know we were all excited. I remember tuning in to watch Children in Lead because we got that episode that became born again so we could see you know what what was the 10th doctor going to be like and it was mm. really amusing and exciting to think that here we are in 2023 um, back there back there again you know waiting to see you know what the 14th doctor is going to be like so yes it was very exciting i've not tuned in for children in need for a few years no, me neither and, uh, and and it felt lovely yeah, Friday the 17th of September, uh, Friday the 17th of November even, 24 hours ago, as of time of recording, saw the, the premiere of, of this as part of this year's Children in Need event. They hold this every single year, and I think it's actually getting shorter over the years, but we've got a whole five minutes worth of all new Doctor Who. It's the first Doctor Who that's been broadcast of any kind in over a year, John. Does it seem like 12 months to you? Um, it does feel like 12 months. Um, <laughs> I wish it had gone on a lot longer. A if I'm honest. Question, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've just put myself in for therapy to be honest. After that. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> of course, it's not just a year for us, like dedicated fans. I mean, the, the British public they adore David Tennant. He's one of Britain's best loved and most prolific actors, isn't he, Charlotte? That's no exaggeration. And back no. in the noughties, this role made him a household name, isn't it? So a lot of people will have been attracted by these promo pictures, by the little trailers, and just the, the idea they could glimpse him in that role again. Well, yeah, because I think there was a real sort of, like, what, like this sort of feeling of how is he going to play it this time, sort yeah. of surrounding him coming back. Because we haven't had a full-on Doctor return. We've had Tom Baker as a lovely little cameo. We've not had this a proper actor for a full series come back. And yeah. I that was the main thing I was looking forward to, just to see, is this going to give us a bit of a hint towards how is he going to play it this time? 
because I do hope and I still have the hope that he's not just going to do 10 again because I think that'd be such a waste of tenants talent we know he can play bad good everything in between now he's proved that in so many other projects so that was my first thing I was just like yeah this is our first almost look at 14 and I wanted to and I hoped it was a good show in 414. I wouldn't describe David Tennant as a non-predictable actor necessarily. I think he chooses his, ro- his roles very wisely, very carefully. I think I think he's got more range than some, but there are actors with a lot, lot more range. There are kind of Den- David Tennant parts, but not really, because he'll play serial killers one week and and dads are on the school run the next. What do you think perception is, Gary, of of uh, David Tennant in the States, because he's not as popular as Matt Smith, is he? Uh, it's pretty even. I mean, with me, he's more popular. Uh, yeah. But I'd say it's pretty even here in the States uh, because when it really reached its crescendo of popularity here, it yeah. was during Matt Smith's run. And it was Netflix. Netflix carrying the newer new who completely was what really built up to the 50th anniversary and it taking over comic cons and nerddom and being uh being everything it wanted to be over here while still remaining british right Mm -hmm. so without selling out to america fully i mean i'm sure there's people who who (laughs) will question that but it didn't feel like that way to me anyway uh people like he's very popular here he's he's immensely popular uh amongst nerds i don't know if the general public is that aware of him outside they might know him from harry potter uh more uh and but it's i don't know i'm not a normie so i I, it's hard for me to it's always hard to say uh but uh him coming back was a no-brainer Absolutely. We, uh, as and I talked about this after we watched that disastrous Timeless Children and then, you know, uh, at, the, at the end of uh, the Jody era, yeah. there were, you know, we you know, we just come off of No Way Home and we're like, listen, uh, we just came off of COVID. Everything's being reset. You need sure things. So, yeah, bring back David Tennant. I never thought for a million years they'd bring back Russell T. Davies or he'd come back because he said multiple times he would never come back. But over now over again. why he came back. And I don't think it's the best of reasons, which is really sad. Yeah, yeah. I think really. I've I've always held the hope and kept the faith that it was because of the storytelling possibilities that he talks about all the time. That he he spoke just last week saying, "No, you never stop having ideas for Doctor Who, Sarah." And despite the fact that ideo- ideologically Russell T Davies and I are, are, are getting increasingly further apart, I respected that uh, connection to the material his work ethic and his loyalty uh, and understanding seemingly to viewers. You know, you met, you met Russell T Davis and you found him to be charming company and very warm towards you, didn't you? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a lovely man, uh, but, but they are, I mean, Chris Chibnall's by all accounts, a lovely guy, <laughs> even despite, you know, um, whatever we may think of his uh, choice, creative choices. Uh, yeah. Again, I, I was delighted he was back a lot of people thought, you know, maybe it's a step backwards. But again, like as Gary was saying, it was this, we need this surefire success. It's proved he could do it once. Good faith that, you know, he could do it again. And he is a talented writer. Yes, we know what his politics are, but he's talented enough. I thought, to, you know, you know, he could do that a lot more cleverly and a lot more subtly than Chibnall did. So I was prepared to overlook that as long as it was good stories that he was going to be telling. And when he said in the concert he wanted Doctor in safe hands again, you know, I, I was all for that. Well, yes, I, I do think at this moment in time, Russell is the safe pair of hands we need. But that's what I thought anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we got this uh, this first bit of new writing from Russell T. Davies on, on Doctor Who proper in several years, Destination Scaro by Russell T. Davies. And the blurb simply said in this special Children in Need episode, the Doctor hurtles through space and time to a crucial point in the Daleks' history. And this is obviously ahead of those three specials, the three proper 60th anniversary specials that are coming up beginning from next week. It's a brand new exclusive scene starring David Tennant as the 14th Doctor who uh, shares the the screen with this mysterious new character, so it said in the blurb, played by actor and comedian Mawan Rizwan. Never heard so, of him. 
yeah. yeah, he's got one of those faces. I recognise him from from other things, but I'm not really I'm not really sure what. And so when they when they tease something like this, the idea is with these telethon specials, these minisodes, traditionally, isn't it, Charlotte, that they sit there quite inoffensively within a whole evening's worth of programming, and so people might not stay and watch the entire show, or they, they might sort of flip in and flip out of it, or sometimes people sit down as a family with their children. They may have been fundraising for the same good cause at school all week, but it is that kind of show where there should be something for everybody. That's the conceit of it, isn't it? So I was, I was a little alarmed in the first instance when I realised that the Doctor was going to be visiting a crucial point in the history of his most important and oldest foes, that did send a bit of an, al- an alarm bell ringing with me. Yeah, well, when when I started to see the pictures come through, the first thing I saw, I thought was, God, that looks like Scarrow. Oh, oh no, we're going to Scarrow. Okay, because like you said, usually... These are really disconnected little skits. They're sort of very contained. They're, they're, they're a bit of fun, a bit of fluff, nothing else. So when I saw he was even touching, I didn't even know the Genesis link yet. I just was like, we're doing Carlards. That uniform's a Carlard. It's classic. I was the same as you. I was like, oh, this has to be done right this has because to sometimes, be done carefully. sometimes, Charlotte, they're better made than others as well, aren't they? We found yeah, out this was actually made back in April. So they've had six or seven months to polish this, you know what, haven't they? Yeah, and um, we all said at least it looked like actually this isn't just like a two minute look. Doctor's in the set talking to the audience is actually going to be a written piece. It's actually going to be a bit of drama. Hopefully, we were all saying on Thursday, weren't we? And I just will get more into this when we, but my feeling is for the night and for what children in need is, I think he got completely the wrong topic and the wrong setting for what children yeah. in need is. It's fun. Yeah. It's harmless. It's like I said, it's, it's almost like pantomime. That's what it reminds me of the sketches you tend to get here. And this well, the ten- is there's a difference, really- though, isn't there? There's a difference because there's the two there's the two main fundraisers in Britain. There is Children in Need Night, which which is how would you describe the the causes? They're always obviously geared around children, aren't they, Sarah? But they they can revolve around anything from sort of setting yourself sporting challenges to uh, to reading as many books as you possibly can in a week. They do tend to all be geared around children, don't they? It's very family friendly. Whereas comic relief, the the conceit is that it's sort of it is literally all comedians and things like that. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a spoof, a pastiche. That's the main difference. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's overlaps, but generally, you know, comic relief goes on longer and it goes on past the watershed, so then you can get into the more you know adult humour and adult spoofs. But yeah, children in need, very family friendly, uh, especially you know, for the little ones. Uh, and the fact, you know, it, it ended at 10 o'clock. So I imagine, you know, a lot of families let the kids stay up if they've been involved in fundraising. There was a lot, they were allowed to stay up just for this event. But yeah, it's very, yeah, it is. Harmless is just the word, you know, it, it's singing and dancing and silly stuff, puppets and that kind of thing. Um, and this slap bang, super serious very dark it just just did not fit at all it was like a sore thumb well russell t davies when he first talked about this a few days ago he put out a little bit of a statement on instagram russell uses instagram quite a lot gary i don't know if you follow him over there and because people were asking him about about the the new 14th doctor and he was saying oh you may find that the new incarnation won't be exactly like the 10th he'll be a little bit more human but they were also asking him about the about the tone about the tone of it. And this was his reply. He said uh, that the Dr. Dalek Scarrow, this Friday, uh, as part of Children in Need, starring David Tennant and Mawan Rizwan, it's not a comedy skit. It's a fully scored and fx five-minute scene produced by X, Y, and Z. And apparently the music was by Murray Gold, but ri- written by... No, the music was by Ru- Ru- uh, Murray Gold, and that it was the arrival of the, uh, of the new Doctor. To me, though, this is absolutely a textbook example of what a skit 
is. I found it impossible to take this thing seriously. Just as just as Sarah was saying, Sarah and Charlotte were saying, they've positioned it really snugly. It's a crucial part of the series broader mythology that's been in place for 50 years and kind of taken the piss out of it. Am I overreacting? No. No. no there, there's an earnest from Doctor Who. They like they even tried it in the Jody era. It, it didn't work. But they tried nothing worked in the Jody era, mate. No, nothing worked. But this was a joke and it made a joke out of the Daleks. It made a joke out of Davros yeah. and uh one of the greatest villains of all time. And yeah. you know the, the the Daleks have been a hard nut to crack for even Moffat and RTD. I think they did a good job with them, but uh you know like I'm a big fan of Asylum of the Daleks. I don't know if you guys are. I'm a huge yeah, I love that one. Mm. Yeah, I like Me it. Too. I think it made the Daleks kind of like creepy. And, you know, the, the fact that they took a young girl and cut her into pieces and put her in a Dalek, that's the kind of stuff we need to hear from the Daleks. Not like, oh, silly Billy, we knocked off their claw and put in a plunger. Like, what the hell? And then we could have left that alone. That could have been like, I could have forgotten it, whatever. But that's now canon for Doctor Who, folks. That's Gary. He was Gary. going on about yeah. how um people you know we shouldn't portray people in wheelchairs i know that's what he's and stuff like that we'll, and we'll come like, to we'll come to that later that, on yeah <laughs> but the we'll come to that. Itself, but the, yeah the special itself was a joke the music was terrible the directing was terrible the and if he said it wasn't a comedy he's right because i didn't laugh at any of it although it was supposed <laughs> to be funny it, yeah it, mm. the intent was to be funny but yeah i, I, I laughed it, at the brilliant woman Thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think we all laughed at that. You heard brilliant woman. Did you think of the brilliant woman that like completely uh dissed Graham when it came to this cancer? Because that's yeah, well, yeah. I, I, yeah. I thought it was about the great the the uh actually casting of a disability woman, so disabled well, woman. So thought, for, a, you know, for a split second, Matt, when he said that for off. just for just a split second, I had no idea who he was talking about. I got completely blanked it from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> it's, pretty what 12, it's pretty what 12 months can do isn't it i i also f i found the timing of this really curious because as you know on thursday is the colorized version of the daleks uh oh, you know right. that's it's a pivotal episode you know as ian's been saying for about two weeks right. this is and, and sarah they handled the they've handled the promotion of that the, the the positioning of it, how they've aimed it with marketing. Electric Bull here says yeah. he knows how to market a show, meaning Russell T. Davis. The marketing of that has been bang on. They haven't yeah, put it on a mainstream channel in prime time. They've put it on the right channel, attracted the right people. And yet, just as Charlotte says, this is a really weird thing to fire at the children in need audience the week before this huge relaunch of a major brand. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's poking fun at the Daleks. And, uh, yeah, but you want this to you you want people to tune in on Thursday on BBC Four to look at this colorized thing that you've taken super seriously and rightly so because the Daleks is phenomenal. It's iconic. So why would you bring it into the public consciousness that the Daleks are silly and have a plunger and oh the the names are an anagram ha oh, oh, ha oh, oh. ha yes we know fans yes we know that but the, to actually see that in and to also have the doctor come up with it it was just absolutely ridiculous and and here's was... the thing um, Gosh, I've said this he could have done this about anything he could have made up a monster just for this skit. Just five have, minutes worth yes. of screen time, Charlotte. He, he could have just done anything. There was he had he had he had he, the whole like world go anywhere, from. anywhere in space and time, in the yeah. past, the present, or the future. Why here? But he he picked this. He purposely linked to G Genesis. He could have just done a random Dalek thing as well. He didn't have to be Genesis. Was the link? He didn't have to have Davros in it. It's a political and he could have done anything, but he picked this. It's but a political back, thing. It's obvious it's a yeah. political thing. That's what they're doing. It's just this. Oh, I can't if you asked. go back to 2005 as well, when you got Dalek that came out, Dalek made it very, very serious, you know, where they mm. actually did the scene where they said, oh, what are you going to do? Sucker me to death with the plunger. Yes. And it started sucking the, sucking the guy's face off. So you've done that. And now just there's almost an arrogance to say, we're going to make a joke out of this now. Um, and... Oh well, he's literally given him the plunger out of the the doctor's exactly. uh, uh, yeah. toilet, you know. 
Yeah. It's Russell, we've got a comment here from Electric Bull, John, who says Russell T. Davies is a very good writer. If you, Even if you don't agree with his politics, you can still enjoy his shows. This is something that I said recently on a video. I, I still largely stand by that. I think he, he does have a way of, of building characters and telling stories in the most compelling, in the most compelling of ways. And um, I'm not going to write him off based on these five minutes, but I think it displays a, an extraordinary lapse of judgment i i put it down to being thrown together in five minutes but like i said this was made six or seven months ago it's and this is technically this is the curtain going up on yeah. an entire new production i don't know who who to blame other than russell t other than russell t davis atom mirabalis says yeah it was a sketch but a high quality sketch I think they made Davros more of a kid's villain than they originally made him in the show. It came across like a skit with a Power yes. Rangers villain. From and that's Sarah because, Jane Adventures. That's because that. of the tone. And I think it was obvious as well. And th see if they'd have come out with it and said, this. if Russell on Instagram have, had said, look, this is a skit. It's like Dimensions in Time. It's a little bit of fun for, for the family on Comic Relief, on Children in Need Night. We're going to have a little bit of fun, poke a little bit of fun. Don't take it se too seriously. I'd have probably been okay with it. But you could tell immediately, as soon as those doors opened, the goofy music, the silly faces, even David Tennant, who can sometimes overact, we, he pushes it just enough. I thought David Tennant was terrible in this. And, and, this, uh, and this gentleman as well, Mawan Rizwan, who I, I've not seen in anything, I know that he's a, a poet and a sort of comedian, Sarah. I thought, well, you know, they've cast this guy. It's a five-minute episode. It might be okay. But even, he was playing it goofy as well. It immediately reminded me, it reminded me of something right from the very start, the way that sort of sketch type feel. And I wonder if you'd ever seen this show, this kid show that's on the BBC. And it's been on for years and years and years now called Horrible Histories. Histories. They go, yes. They very go much back. The, you going to say yes. that? They go back into into real world history, don't they? And they yeah. various. It's the same set of actors always always play these historical figures, but they play them with that kind of wry, sarcastic tone. Oh, I don't know. What are you doing here? I'm just doing my job, mm -hmm. Sir Francis of Assisi. It's all, and that yes. was the tone of this thing. It was as if the Doctor Who history was real history, and they were ripping the living piss out of it, Ian. Uh, that's exactly oh, how it came off. First impressions are everything, even though, you know, I'm aware of children and need specials and I didn't expect anything serious, but to no. go this route was like, it was dumbfounding, dude. I was like, wow, that is, it. but I mean, I know we're going to get to it, but we could have forgotten this just like we could have forgotten yeah. the Jody era, but there's a couple of things they did to make it impossible for us yes. to do so. And, yeah. th and that is sticking it to the fans. That is straight up like, screw you, bigots. We're going to we're gonna make you hate this show even more. Uh, and, and, and it's not going to help, uh, you know, as well. especially over here, you know. Yeah, and, I, and I'll and i just to say something positive, which I think is a shame, but he's a positive. They got Julian Bleach back, and he actually yeah. did a really good performance yeah. in here. I love he this actually, song. He's yeah. great. He, he I've great. All, he, I've uh, loved him since New Who when he was my first, my first Davros. And as soon as he started talking, because obviously he looks very different, I was like, oh, I know that voice. And then I, it clicked who it was. And I actually, at the end, felt sorry for him because I was like, no, you're actually performing well in this. You're actually giving, trying to give this a bit of credos, a bit of something, because that first, like, before, like minute before Tennant's doctor arrived and he was talking and like you could feel like this was Davros talking about his machine and he's happy and he's prideful and he's well, like so excited about it. There's a reason why they continually continually go back to Julian Ble uh, Bleach. He's a he's a very very well respected stage actor. This guy is never short, never short of work. He does mostly work on the stage, and they've always viewed it as a bit of an honour that he'd be in Doctor Who. I think and... you guys are being too nice. It was absolute shit, all of it. <laughs> you know what I mean, every bit. Of well, it no, I, don't, I did. I did I like Julian. I thought that Julian turned up and brought his best here, yeah, considering he was matter. considering he was considering he was given terrible material. Mm. 
uh, he played it at least a bit of a panto, isn't it? Exactly, it's a whole thing, a whole a thing should never version. be made. It's absolute rubbish, all of it, right? Seriously, taking the piss out of the Daleks, you know, destroying the, or anyway, whatever. So it's what I don't all get. Of it nonsense. It, even the performances were terrible. I found, I found all three of them. Uh, all of them, it was just turn it into a joke. Well, what is that all about? Why is Russell T going down this road? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, well, I, I thought the Ju- I thought Julian Bleach was was I thought Julian Bleach was struggling with it because I think he's really? he's got dramatic. Yeah, I thought I think he's got dramatic instincts, and you could see he could he was picking up obviously on the energy of the the way the other two were playing it. David Tennant was playing it as a spoof. The the other guy because he's oh, yeah. a comedian. He was he was just playing it as a total and utter spoof. Is he a and comedian so, though? Is he a comedian no. or is he one of those self described comedians who's never done that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of those, so. Gary, things have got that bad that it's got to the point where anybody the BBC describes as a comedian, I automatically, uh, you know, it's you think, well, QI, you any, haven't they? get some independent fact checkers <laughs> to go on that. Yeah. We've got a comment here from Dowie who says, Normie here, I have never watched a single episode, but when I first heard of Doctor Who, it was David Tennant. So I'd say he's pretty popular. The franchise reached me on a hail, a hail neurotic <laughs> Gary, that Very one's good. for you. Uh, Paul Toastland agrees with you, Ian. It was crap. I'm not saying this was good, Gary, but I, I think it's important, just as Charlotte was saying, to be at least at least fair and see that Julian Bleach was at least trying to to gnash his he, dramatic chops with, okay, with this. I, he actually treated it like an actor. Yes. Well, that's his job. Whereas God the sake. other two were, it was like, oh, a fun day at the office. Let's just get a couple of lines in and laugh at our, yeah. ourselves. That's, what it was. That's only, exactly how it felt, Charlotte. Yes. The actors can only perform with what they were given, right? And yeah, only, the material was only awful. perform when the director tells them to do, right? But that's beside the point. The whole thing was rubbish. The whole See, thing. See, the tone, the tone was all wrong for me. I mean, after the time as children and after it pretty much being that close to being cancelled by the BBC under the Chibnall era, you don't come back. I know it's children in need, but you're a few days out from a special. You don't come back and go, do you know what? We're going to do it in a in a, in a comedic tone. You no. go serious. Um, and especially if you're going to set it on Scarrow, as Charlotte said earlier, you play it serious. You know. I have a question for the panel. Uh, yes, you do. You The, the earnestness of Doctor Who. Doctor Who is a bonker show and that's it but it works because it takes itself seriously and it can do all kinds of crazy stuff in an earnest matter that we love and that's why we've loved it for so long but i have a question for you guys because we know that the anniversary of doctor who is the 23rd uh how do you guys feel about them moving it to an american holiday <laughs> really? like, <laughs> it's thanksgiving they, they moved it to thanksgiving so the Thanksgiving weekend, by the way, but it's not the exact holiday. But how do you feel about them moving it away from from what would have? Why not put it on a freaking Thursday? Why not just have it on that day? Because, because they will. They, because they need to maximize the audience, the on the night audience in Great Britain, and and people wouldn't. People so wouldn't Saturday, watch it Saturday in, still right, a big day because okay, yeah. So, yeah. so you guys still have like telethons and stuff which is really adorable yeah. and i like it we we don't do that we gave up on that a long time ago we don't it I mean, jerry lewis <laughs> yeah uh, yeah I mean, well yeah uh, we, we other than sports we don't have events where you know people mm-hmm. sit around and watch live broadcast tv anymore it's just done right so uh it's it's cool that you guys still do that and i admire you for that and that's I, I i miss that a little bit over here in america but is Saturday still a good day? Because it's the worst day for yeah. broadcast television. It always has been since day one. Is it still your best day? Is it? Yes, best? it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the BBC, right? It is because um, the BBC obviously is, is um, being powered by our money, basically, and they have something like Strictly on, which gets. Did they get how much did I get? Um, is it millions? What a ridiculous it? amount! Yeah, yeah so that, they, so they line like, them up. It's so the they most line watched them up. show go, in Britain. Yeah, they go. Doctor Who, Strictly, do you know what I mean? They line up all their popular shows and, and all the uh, all the old dears watch the shows on Saturday. So Saturday is very it's a very big day for, for, for the BBC. Um so yeah. I'm glad they moved it to back to Saturday. Yeah. I, I am. Like yeah. uh, I thought that was good, but uh it, it's it's tragic what's happened. Um I, I was afraid this was gonna happen to this to this franchise. I, I did I had a little bit of hope, but it was like three percent. 
I would say three, maybe three and a half percent. Well, they put out a trailer about six, uh, about six weeks ago, Gary, <laughs> a two minutes worth of trailer. And that was, I mean, in my view, that was a breathtaking trailer. Increased production values, some yep. looks like some fantastic acting, and it, it showed us just enough. I think we've, and to be honest, I think we have still got plenty of reason to be optimistic about the three actual episodes. But nonetheless, when it After comes to marketing, so marketing is so, so important, and you can do a lot of damage in five you know, minutes. Marketing when is for this has been shit. Sorry for the 60th anniversary. I think it's been total shit. Uh, I think it, compare it to I the think 50th. The 50th was freaking awesome. Those, was, even was. that little that teaser trailer that was just animated, like it gave you goosebumps. It was freaking yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and ten, ten years ago, I, ten years I, ago I, though, Gary, Doctor Who was massively popular. It was. You know, we, I, are, I, we are. Trailer, and it's it was good, and I felt nothing. Yeah. I felt like nothing. And and the chat mentioned it. The worst, worst part about this children need special was Murray Gold. That I couldn't believe when you just told me that was his music. I'm like, oh shit! I can't believe yeah, it. Either. It was not it. Yeah, and you know, I'm. You know what I think of Murray Gold, and I was like, it's not your best work, Murray. Sarah, I no. thought it was. I thought it was stock music from the children in need. Maybe I thought, I thought, was- <laughs> I, thought I thought I thought that they'd filmed it. Maybe they'd used Bad Wolf facilities to film it, and then they'd given it to another production team. It was. It was so tonally off. Richard Brooks says five minutes of desecration of Davros and the Daleks to start a new era. Talk about missing the mood of the room. Uh, oh, well, yeah. I mean, there are things in this that rankle me as a fan, Matt. And when I saw the uniforms, I this guy, I, I didn't know whether he was going to be any good or not. He was awful. So fair enough. But they got a voice cameo in for yeah. Peter Miles's Nida in the now, background. Was that AI? That? I don't know. Because but if it t- was AI, I give up on the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. As an artist... I mean, I, I, I hate AI well, they, completely. Remember, they did it before. With They put Nick Courtney's Brigadier in a similar scene in Flux, didn't they? Yeah. And oh. Did they? Did they? I didn't watch it. I, don't, I haven't seen the last yeah. five years. So. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was awful. Yeah, it was awful. Uh, but, yeah, I noticed that little touches like that. So there's that effort to anchor it in that mythology. But to be quite honest, John, that just winds me up even more. Oh, Why I mean, can't got- this character and that character and that character? I just, I just was watching that, and I think at the end of it, my family said to me, "Where are you going?" As I walked out the front door in my pajamas with a paper bag. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll be back later. <laughs> I was out to dinner, and I stepped out to watch it on my phone. Like that was the first chance I had to watch it after Friday Night Tights, and I came back yeah. and I was like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "Just watch the first, first <laughs> Doctor Who thing from Russell T. Davies since it came yeah. back, and it was uh, it was terrible. It was terrible." I, I watched I, it with I my think... boys, and yeah. we kind of just and sat there in silence here. and just and just looked at each other like that. Uh, I I think for the purposes of marketing, either. I think for the purposes of marketing, Sarah, <laughs> you think about your boys who were so excited by the Hooniverse fanfare thing a couple of weeks ago, they instantly lost that. them. They've instantly lost them. So I think that actually this is a marketing disaster. Yes. I, I'm, I, I hope it raised money for children in need because this has probably cost Doctor Who quite a lot in, in Britain. I mean, th- there are people in the live chat who like, who enjoyed it. And obviously all opinions are perfectly welcome, everybody. So, and there's somebody here who's, who's um, let me get to this comment, actually. You know, it's okay to be positive about things now and again uh, and who who, sure. who who really don't agree with what we're okay. saying at all. Which, which I understand that completely. Okay. Like that. We've yeah. always been, we've always tried to be balanced here, but I, I thought this was bloody awful and nobody's been more hopeful and more, uh, oh. and placed more faith in this new production than, than me. Yeah. You got family. that right. <laughs> and me. And- <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was, I was optimistic. And when I felt that I just kind of, I liked to, I liked to see Julian Bleach. I got that big hit of nostalgia. <sighs> And then when I processed what I'd seen, I just felt deflated. But the actual damage comes from what happened next, which we'll get onto. The content, the content itself could have been harmless, but it, it's the intent behind it. I think you've also got to look at the fact when you look at the general viewer, and the general viewer is what they're trying to entice back to the show. Yes. Mm-hmm. When they're watching Children in Need and they're watching that, they don't know if it's 
canon or not they don't know if it's exactly. related to something all they do is they're probably sitting down they've not seen any advertisements for the new episodes coming they're sitting there with the family watching children in need and they go oh doctor who and they watch that and they go what complete rubbish that was why if, am i going to tune in in a few days it confirms time? anybody it's who's never been anybody who's never been charmed by doctor who or may or people say in their 20s who feel like they may have grown out of it you know it's that silly thing i liked when i was 12 will have had all of those things confirmed by that four and a half minutes worth of of tv it's awful oh. it's, it's it's really funny because um you know my brother he watched it and he was like because he, he's a huge fan of doctor and he was like oh that was awful. And I'm like, yeah, it was awful. But think about it, right? Russell T wrote this. He literally went out of his way to write this. What does that say for the future of Doctor Who? That's all Not I'm saying. Looking good. I, it felt dated. Uh, I, I, you know, it did feel dated. Yeah. I, 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 I heard Russell bring up Marvel a lot. Yes. In yeah. this, he's brought up the MCU, and, and you know, I did, I, I didn't want to. The, the Hooniverse thing, I hate the title of it. I'm not against like, hey, do a Eighth Doctor special. I'm not against that. Okay, I'm all yeah. for it. But uh, it, it it really felt like, hey, we want to lean into to recent Marvel. We want to do the yeah. irreverent humor, silly Billy BS, and uh, it, it, that's exactly what it looks like they're going to. Which it feels like it's so like that. that he's that embarrassing mm. uncle or dad who's trying to be cool with the kids, but he's like a few yeah. years out of date. Like, Marvel yeah. used to be good. Yes, it did, Russell, yeah. but that was like five years ago. I think we can. I think we can. I think we are. We can very easily read too much in this into this as well i think i think russell is losing his edge and losing his eye for what the general public want and for and for tone i don't think he's aware that people have lost interest in in marvel that marvel the marvel have lost their audience i don't think he's aware or acceptance of that i don't think that this the tone of this or the writing on this is necessarily any reflection on what those three specials we're going to get over the next three weeks are going to be. I hope not. I, think, I, don't, I don't. I don't. Th I don't that be the case at all. Yeah. I say I've. I've watched practically everything the man's ever written. The the guy has never really put out anything bad until last night. And so I'm. I'm thinking it, it's a more of a marketing disaster. He he's read the room completely wrong. And, and like you said, Ian and John, come mm -hmm. to think of it. The norm, the the norm is who don't know that this is tied to Genesis of the Daleks, they'll they'll just think that was just a bit of fluff, a bit of nonsense. So whilst they won't feel like any canon has been disrupted in the way that we do, and like it's this big affront to our fan gene, they they know people do know bad quality when they see it. People know slapdash slapdash production when they see it when something isn't when something just doesn't feel right. It felt phony and it felt like a skit and. I think what well, I thought this was coming back properly. And I mean, so we've got a comment here from Electric Bull who says the idea that the doctor gave them the plunger is pretty funny since they never used it in the classic era. And I mean, for me, the punchline, this is how you know it's a joke. There was a punchline. In fact, there was there was two or three. And how, to be honest, a fan like David Tennant, how he could get on board with this. I, but I suppose Money. he'll just do anything that Russell. He'll just do anything that Russell Money. says. I mean, particularly if it's for charity. It just, it just devalues your classic enemy in the yeah. history of the show. But that, that's what I'm saying. He literally he 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 wrote yeah. this with that yeah. in mind. And what does that say? Exactly. Yeah, and and also I can't help but think of another time in things. Starry mentioned the colorization of the Daleks. We've just had the whole, as much as we can, of the classic era put on iPlayer. We've just had this massive sort of look at yeah. the classic era. Isn't it brilliant? Let's embrace it. Let's show it as much as we can. And you are literally taking the mick. Yeah, they're deconstructing like, it. You can't have classic now be a pride of place on the iPlayer. Have those episodes with Davros that we know and that we know his character so even people who aren't fans might have watched some of that just because of they got interested because of the fanfare of those classic episodes going on the eye player. And well, now they see this. It, if, it, if, well, if it, it had, had been Charlotte, if it had just been the if it had just been the Daleks, I I may just may have hand waved it as a bit of silliness that can be ignored. But just as Aidan McGear says here, he didn't need to bring in Davros. He chose to do that. Could have ignored it entirely. And this this is another another wound that could have been cauterized, the <laughs> damage localized. Semi-visual okay. meta commentary for what is to come. 
Yeah. We've seen a lot of franchises get destroyed and uh, we haven't really seen, this is the first full effort to bring a fandom back. There, now there was an yeah. anomaly of Star Trek Picard season three and Terry Mattel, something RTD even mentioned and said he loved yeah. and uh, was going to try to emulate, but popping a plunger on there might be telling us exactly what's to come. See, the important thing about getting the normies in is you still need your hardcore fan base. We are the shepherds. We shepherd the normies in. All right. We're the ones we're the ones when Game of Thrones was on who read the books. We always had a book guy who had to explain all the stuff that people were asking. Same yeah. with Doctor <laughs> Who. You know, like, what was that reference to? And we uh, go to the classic episode. You need you need the f- one fan around to help shepherd in normies. You can't just completely diss your hardcore fan base and go, oh, we're going to just bypass yeah. them again and go after the normies. It's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. I, I said at the time, even if like there was no agenda and they just started making Doctor Who and they brought back everybody, you're still not going to get the, the the amount of people you had before. That's just yeah. never going to happen. But that's what they want. And they're going to, you know, I've always thought these three specials were probably going to be pretty good, you know, and then we'll see with Shudi Gatwa. Uh, I'm, my hopes are not high. OK, they uh, just weren't. <laughs> they were dashed immediately in their first interview. But. I, I was like, at least, you know, uh, I, I think Disbrew echoed this too. It's like, hey, at least we're going to get, you know, at least I'll be able to watch these three episodes and kind of dip yeah. out, kind of like with Picard season three. It looks a lot like to me that we're going to get Kurtzman, the, the RTD Kurtzman era of Trek with Doctor Who. No, that, that's not. what it's looking yeah. like. And it's not good. A bunch, of, a bunch of Wallace here says, to be fair, no one is scared of the Daleks. That's the whole point for me. I disagree. I think a lot of people are still scared of Daleks. Sarah, your, your own mother. My mum is. <laughs> she, she watched it in the 60s it. and was terrified. She did watch it last night. She messaged me and she said, well, that was crap. It's not so much of what they look like. It's so much of what they do. Like, it's like what, garlic, it's what they instance. represent. Yeah, uh, well, well, but Dal- Dalek actually um, created some, um, some, some form of, of, of evil about the Daleks and how they operate. So it was the, the first time we ever saw a Dalek truly menacing, right? Mm-hmm. And that's Great the episode. thing. It, yeah, it looks like a it looks like a, a a trash can basically. That's that's basically what what a what a what a Dalek looks like. Mm-hmm. Not terrifying physically, but what it could do is terrifying. And, and that's what Russell T it. brought to us in Dalek, right? And yeah, yeah. anyway, whatever. Mm-hmm. Got a comment here from Matthew. Got a comment here from Matthew. Yeah, you know, sorry, Gary. It, no, it's indestructible with a singular focus. And that episode yeah. of Dalek, the Dalek is one of the best episodes ever mm-hmm. of Doctor yeah, Who. Even and, now, yeah. And, yeah. And uh, it, this pissed all over it. Uh, their yeah, own work, yeah. you know. I, I I can't believe it. It's even, I, it's even traded, didn't it, Gary? On some of the the dynamic of that. Yeah, when Christopher Eccleston gets lost, it, locked in that room, and the Daleks yeah. chained off. You kind of got to return to a, a, a similar feel to it, a confined space. And there's a Dalek. It's incapacitated, but it's definitely a Dalek. And as you say, it it kind of affects that as well. Matthew Pounder says here that New Who is a compromise, and it all depends on how much you're willing to put up with, Matt. As somebody who has, you deliberately stepped away from your Doctor Who a few years ago, didn't you, for a combination of reasons. Matthew here has got a point, isn't he? It's how many things can we hand wave? How many things can we just think, oh, I'll just forget I saw that? Or, oh, it was just for children in need. Oh, it was just just one thing. Oh, we can only do that so far. Even I can only do that so far. Well, timeless children's a deal breaker. And 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 RTD has done his best to just made the make this uh, you know, I'm gonna cover it, but I just don't care. You don't get rid of timeless. Nobody ever expected them to get rid of the Jody era. I never expected that. No. I was like, you know, we can just forget it happened. I can skip yeah, it. Yeah. But of course they put in the timeless children. So you don't forget it. Yeah. Right. Well, that's kind of a deal breaker. And if, uh, you know, I know shooty got what came out recently and said that they are going to depict the first doctor as the first doctor. Well, how does that work? So are you going to not erase the timeless children or is William Hartnell, the first doctor, because one cannot exist without the other. And, and so yeah. you, you have to address that to the fandom And, you know, I understand RTD doesn't want to disrespect his friend, but like the Doctor Who fandom should come above that. Come above his... Well, Gary, the problem is that the mainstream audience must come above. I I agree with you up to a point, but I think the mainstream audience simply must come above them. And and that's that's the real reason why he's not going to, he's not going to address it on screen. I think the, I think the series has got, has got more um, damaging fires 
to fight in the here and now and to re to reestablish the show with a broader mainstream audience is far far more important so i never expected that to happen it's not that I th it's not that i wouldn't like it to happen i just don't i i completely see why yes. it's not a pro it's priority yeah. well yeah because the, the general public won't know about the timeless no, children they don't. Ga so, gary so the, so the, few the people in is not even going to get into this that's the problem with, the with the, i can't speak for the uk gary, but here nobody's going to care with the timeless children so few people watched that episode and and even fewer still hardly any of them understood it so to spend valuable screen tr screen time on doing something hardly anybody saw or understood would in my view be a bit of a folly even even though it would please obviously myself so you're, you're trying to appease the people who had already lost interest and you're thinking well we're just going to bring david Tennant back but once he's gone we're right back to pretty much the jody era a little well, snapshot could... of that. I, I, my my niece, who David Tennant was her doctor when she was little and she grew up, she watched it last night, and she messaged me and she said, "That was a load of rubbish. I'm not not watching any of this." That's heartbreaking. Um, and 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 it, it is because you know, I was the uncle who got them into it all. I was the uncle who you know got them the toys and the figures, and they loved every element of it. But the last few years, they went away from it and they watched that, and they were like. This doesn't and, track and, me and to that, it. And that's the thing that also I was thinking about. Me and Star even spoke about this last night on Messenger with each other. The show is in a, such a perilous state. It's in such a fragile state. It needs to be as pleasing. It needs to get the fans as, back as much as possible. I think we've all said that to some degree on this stream so far. So what's Russell done? He's deliberately gone against canon he's deliberately picked a, a character that's re well loved and well known in classic era he's gone out of his way to mention jody's doctor he's done so many things in five minutes which he didn't need to do mm -hmm. he Very didn't scary. need to touch any of this stuff but he has and he's done it in such a brick in the face sort of way and after watching that I even I said I now am nervous and it felt I couldn't describe it proper last night, but after watching it, I just felt let down. I know it sounds really stupid. It's a massive, it doesn't no, sound stupid. Yeah. I felt the same. I felt massively deflated. Like I said, I've, I'm a big fan of Russell T. Davies' work. And, and his work is what I don't have to like a person. I certainly don't have to agree with their ideology to enjoy their work. And so to and, and so to get this sort of this example of of what we could be getting. As I say, I look at this mark in terms of marketing, a, a kind of a market. Yes, it is for charity, but it's also marketing for Doctor Who. And I, I can't believe they get it so so wrong. It's so inappropriate. So for people like me who I'm looking for reassurances that the that sins of the recent past are going to be made up for and lessons have been learnt. All I see here is a series that, for example, if I was if I was your niece there, John, who'd grown up watching the show, or older older fans too, I, I would imagine would watch this and see it riffing off, off Genesis of the Daleks and think, well, here's a show that if it's not either A, trading off its own mythos or selling it completely out or just sniffing its own farts, it's got... It's got no reason to exist anymore. Yeah. It looks no. like a show that's a spent force. And I know it's not a spent force because there's all these fantastic storytellers that want to work on it that can't get in. The trouble you've got now is, and I've said this before, you've got a click in the production team and their, their friends that yeah. for years it's just been passed around yeah. like a present to each one of them. You need fresh people to come in, fresh minds and ideas and that's not happening. It's they've gone back. They agree. Everyone's saying that they have played it safe. They had to with the Jodie Whittaker situation and Chibnall era. They had to do that. But you would think they'd have a long term strategy to think, well, hang on a minute. This has run its course now. We need to go in a new direction. Let's try and bring some fresh people in. But all I keep seeing at the moment is and this this is how I know that it's now connected with Disney is the fact that. They've just brought two people over from Loki. Oh, I'm God. not enjoying Loki at all. Yeah, and I think it's the director yeah. and one of the writers. Uh, the director who left. Was, yeah. Yes, she left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God. And, and I, I, the thing is that I was yeah. telling everybody it was going to go down this road. Yeah. 
and um, obviously me and Simon were of of that thought. Um, but you guys had you guys were positive about what was going to go forward. But now everything that um, Charlotte said just now, it really does. It's, it's it's like a brick in the face now. Do you know what I mean? And the and same thing with what what Gary is saying as well. What, now now what? That's the question. Now what's going to happen? Well, my the thing is though, Ian, it, is that yeah, this this was unreservedly absolutely awful. There is there is no way anybody. I've seen people who've been standing up for Chris Chibnall stuff over the last five years over on X saying, no, I'm not going to stand by this. This <laughs> this was terrible. Mm. That but and mostly because. It's also badly judged. I don't think that this will be the tone of the three specials. I don't think that Tennant's acting will be so so off kilter. I do think Russell will have, will be telling half decent stories, and I, I I think we can see by the by the trailers and everything else the production values are considerably higher. Well, they're always, they're always always going to be though, weren't they, Dan? You know. So what I'm what I'm saying though, Ian, is just because this was shit, it doesn't mean that the next three hours will be shit. Yeah, but we <laughs> before all this happened, we were saying right, it's going down the wrong road, and you were saying the same thing. It does yes, look I was. Like this, I think it doesn't, right? doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It doesn't mean I'm wrong about everything. No, no, I know, <laughs> I know, mate, but. But it, it's like the light right in the wall, isn't just it? Just because this Minnesota wasn't was was awful, it doesn't mean that, I hope, that we've got to give up completely. I hope, but my my that hopes are being reactionary dashed. and silly. Yeah, but no, I'm not. I'm just saying, I'm, my 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 hopes are being dashed now because of because of that. Uh, yeah, I can understand thing. it. I'm de I'm That's really ridiculous. deflated by it as well. I I must admit because I feel mm. that all that all that goodwill because it was out there. I, I won't say there was a huge appetite for Doctor Who the way that there was. 10 years ago, Gary, at the 50th, and certainly 18 years ago when David Tennant was at the top of his game. But people were asking me about this show again. Oh, when is it back again? And making a note of it. They wanted to be there because people want to watch this show. But I believe they've just given several, I think they've just given several million, pe million people reason not to watch next Saturday, which mm. they will arguably be bigger, be, be uh, bringing, sorry, bigger guns than that. Uh, yeah. I think we are in a much different space, even when Jody uh, re became uh, the first female doctor, played by Jody Whitaker. Uh, <laughs> and I think that Russell T. Davies has told us over and over again what he intends to do with the show, and I believe him. And I I'm not encouraged by it at all, like at all. I was very wait and see, with a very skeptical eye. But I'm like, all right, David Tennant, RTD, sure, I'll I'll, mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Uh, but I'm not excited about it, and it, it it would be a very hard hill to climb to get this back up to where it was before because this can't just be a big show in the UK now, guys. This has to be a worldwide sensation, a worldwide yeah. streaming sensation. So it's kind of the UK's worst nightmare. It needs to appeal to everyone and not the Brit, which I hate, by the way. I would never want an American working on Doctor Who, ever. Well Ever. I think it's. A, my, I don't know. I don't know if it. I don't know if it kids, needs. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. My kids were into this show, and they dipped mm -hmm. after Joni, and they're not coming back. And nobody their age here is coming back or gives a crap. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be a kid show. So if it appeals to anybody over here, it's going to be a bunch of fifty-year-olds, which is not what they want. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're they're in for some big trouble. And I think, uh, I yeah, I think RTD came off defiant in this this little special. He came off very defiant. And I think that tells us a lot. So uh, if we thought we were going to get an ideology free Doctor Who that was just going to tell Doctor never Who stories, never going to happen. Mm. It was no, I, I, even I never thought that that was a possibility because there was yeah. there was ideology up to a point in the, in his original run, but it was because it was offset. Well, point, with but it's going to go way past that point now, and it's going to alienate people almost immediately. If it hasn't already, yeah, with they, little children in need special, which his was, behavior towards the fans, especially in the last twenty four hours, has been very well, disappointing. Well, before I go, let's get to that yeah. quote. I mean, which absolutely pissed everybody off. Uh, it's, well, well, it depends on which one you mean. Sadly, we've got a, we've got a choice. <laughs> I've got I've got a couple here. Uh, he was so he's quite active on Instagram, Russell T Davis, and he does engage with people, and largely. It's it's quite it's quite nice and cozy stuff, uh, but now and again somebody asks him a question, which it's as if he can't believe they've got the audacity to ask it ask it of him, and we get we get responses where 
well, sometimes they're just plain nasty and the, glo- the gloves come right off. Other times like this, they're, they're quite dismissive. People are obviously uh, very um, upset about the, the change to uh, Davros in particular. Now, I, I thought that obviously this character was originally appeared in 1975, played by Michael Wisher. Everybody uh-huh. loves Michael Wisher's take on the character. Mm-hmm. Then David Goodison, Terry Malloy, fabulous actors played Davros in the classic era. And, da- and Davros, on his own merits, is is an iconic, legendary character in, in popular fiction. He's, he, Michael Wisher's confrontation with Tom Baker's fourth Doctor is seen as one of the seminal moments in Doctor Who in an outstanding story. And and so to alter this this dynamic, this relationship, and that figure in any way, is um, something that I think that any writer, any creative is going to do at their at their peril. Never mind the extent that Russell has with this, but somebody brought him brought him a a, a query just yesterday. Just a query uh, says uh, Davros isn't a wheelchair user. He's a partially mutated Khalid in a life support system halfway between Khalid and Dalek. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I was perfectly fine seeing Davros pre-accident, which is what I thought this was. Same in here. which case, yes, uh, in which case, I, I yeah, Ian, I think it was a pre- I think it was all terrible. But at least Julian Bleach was there. At least the costumes were okay. But he says I think a lot of fans have wanted to see this for some time. But to insist it's there for better representation for disabled people is utterly bizarre. And he explains himself. If you're now going to pretend that Davros was never in the chair or that he just got better, it undermines one of the greatest villains who ever created. Now, Rob Gardner, who's sent that to him on Instagram there, I think that's respectfully put Mm -hmm. to Russell on a public platform. Russell doesn't have to have this public platform on Instagram. It's his Mm -hmm. choice. He's been respectful. He hasn't swore. He hasn't accused him of anything at all. He's expressed his view. Mm -hmm. And and which one-word answer did Russell T. Davis come back with, Sarah? Tough. Well, this is it. It's it's the arrogance, it's the self-righteousness, and and just, yeah, the 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 dismissive tone. The agenda. I think this isn't even a gender, Ian. This is somebody who no. just thinks he's better than you. Yeah. No, 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 I think, not. Look, no, 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 Dan. Look, um, I think Russell T Davies doesn't realise he's the custodian of Doctor Who. He doesn't own Doctor Who. He just thinks he's the bloody got all of it because he brought it back in 2005. And since then, his ego has grown more and more and more. And probably over that time, since he hasn't been on the show... People going, when are you coming back to Doctor Who? When are you coming? And he's grown his friggin' ego bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just gotten to the point now where he thinks I can do no wrong. Yep. Totally. Well, that response to the fandom is is absolutely it, it, that that tells us everything we need to know. Uh, I have the same answer yeah. for when the Who universe goes down the same road as the dark universe. Tough, Russell. <laughs> It'd tough be, yeah uh that's not how you talk to fans especially you know th- that kind of respectful conversation gets conflated with uh, sure there's trolls and there's a-holes everywhere that's life uh but mm-hmm. most of the fans respond like that that and that's proper that's respectful it's just yeah. like hey why are you doing this you know we we, we, we want to love your stuff we want to give you money why are you doing this and you get a tough okay well see ya bye well he did he did similar in the week didn't he where he said basically about um the, the, the person that's playing Rose, and he said, "Well, anyone body who can't accept that is just a sad individual." Um, yeah, who's got an empty he, life or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. My view, and I would flip that. I would say, no, it speaks to your insecurity. Yeah. Every show, every movie, every press release you do, every radio show you do, you have to put in there about your representation and your ideology. I think John, he's become completely. He's he intellectually compromised and ideologi- ideologically captured by yeah. by this I, virus I, I think, that has wiped people. Sorry, Matt. No, you're right. Um, I, I just think that maybe he was looking at the Chibnall era and going, I can do this better. I can explain it a lot better than what they're trying to do. It's just too ham-fisted in the face. I can do, I can explain all these sort of things, all these agendas and everything in a better way. And of course he can't. We can all see through it. Yep. And, I, and I think it's so telling more than because I watched him in the Unleashed, the interview he gave, the two minutes. Yeah, I've got a and clip for of me, that up as well. It was so telling that your priorities are no longer storytelling, Russell. 
yeah. from what you said in that interview to me. Your priorities are not that. The fact that you can, because all you see in Dad Frost isn't a character, isn't a villain, a isn't a completely complex, brilliantly written individual. No, he's part of a group. He's a wheelchair user. He's a disabled character. Well, it's like me. That I've is got, pathetic. I've got, He's more I've, than that. I've yeah, and Darth Vader's an asthmatic, and exactly. Freddy Krueger's uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Freddy Krueger's a burn victim. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my I God, would love to know. I would He's love to know. And clowns. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd love to know what came first in this. The, when when they said you know, we'd like to do something for children in need, you've got five minutes. Was it like, oh, I could take the doctor back to this place and time for a few minutes, and it'll be bit of harmless fun that would have been wrong as it turned out did that come first or was it i've got four minutes here i can write some sort of ideological wrong that i see in the I, we don't know which of those came first neither answer is a, a good outcome in has produced a good outcome in my view but it, i think if we knew which came first then obviously that would be an indicator yeah. particularly like I, say, I think these three specials are going to be fine i can't help but be a little worried about the upcoming series with, yeah. with uh, Shooter yeah. Gatwin in it, though, where he's got a longer what, period of what time. What sticks in my throat with that interview, as Charlotte said, is who does he think he is? And what gave him the... Why does he think he's got to rally for disabled people anyway? Has anybody ever been offended by Davros? Or, as some brilliant person pointed out earlier today, what about Lumic Russell? that you wrote what about uh, max in uh, voyage of the downed what Cassandra. about Cassandra? loads yeah. of disabled characters it's not you can't just say only able-bodied people he doesn't be even villains. Stand that's by ridiculous what, he doesn't even stand by what he says though because two years yeah. ago he was spouting on that only gay people could play gay characters yeah. yeah. Here we are two years later yeah. and he's got a man playing a woman. Nobody so, need, nobody asked you know, him to take up this mantle. Face. Yeah. Um, and I be and again no, it, but he's taken it upon himself to do that though. And the fact yeah. that he says he has the goal to say I say this is how Davros says, Well no, sorry. Sorry, Russell. No, you and don't it goes back say. to being the custodian. He doesn't own yeah. Doctor Who. He needs to realise there are rules to Doctor Who. There are rules. Realized. He can't I'm... just break them willy nilly. Matt, I've got comment here from Digby Strawbridge on screen who says it bore all the uh, horrible example of Disney Marvel trivialising their material. And I've just realised yeah. what this scene with the plunger reminded me of. That plunger, which I, I now just see as a plunger, after 50 mm -hmm. years of being terrified by this thing, <laughs> I was terrified with a small T, I now see that as a plunger. The, the way that he has robbed that of its power, the Dalek's sucker arm, is exactly how that original season of Loki, which I did watch, yep. had had infinity stones rolling around in some drawer somewhere. Yep. It's the same, it, it is, I hate to say it, it's it's the same move. And Absolutely. It's worrying. It's, and it's, it's done it's really deliberately worrying. as well. It's done deliberately. So yes. that just goes to show where, where we're going with Doctor Who. I mean, these three might be okay and might have a little bit of um, women telling off the men in it, probably. But, you know, hopefully it'll be nice and hopefully we'll enjoy it. But the shooty one, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think we're going to go back to square one with that one. So, well, if you remember, Ian, when we saw a few, we, we saw some pictures a few weeks ago of shooty okay, guy out filming, out filming the new show, and he was uh, stood there in the middle of a town centre somewhere wearing a kilt and a what skirt. looked like and what that was a it was a kilt. It was mate. a skirt. It was a skirt. <laughs> it was a kilt, Ian. But no, it was a skirt. Walk outside with right, my pajamas no. on again. <laughs> It was a kilt. If was somebody's a wearing, if somebody's in the middle of a town centre at three in the morning wearing a kilt and a woman's blouse, uh, I, the, my objection to that was that it, it's the kind of zaniness that I cannot abide in this character. That the Doctor is this ridiculously uh, eccentric, hyper eccentric character, which and and I'm not saying they did they. Yeah, every time they did it in the classic show, it was a disaster. It's still a disaster now. But that kind of zaniness just tunes me out of the show completely. And I, I picked up on that. Even though even though Tennant was dressed normally, even though the lighting was low, the, the actual combination of the other production elements spoke of zaniness, spoke of, of a skit and a spoof. Uh, and again, this is exactly what I... Not only which doesn't appeal to me personally, 
But the last thing that I think Doctor Who, sh- who should be doing at this point in its in its history, Charlotte, I, I, I think it's completely wrong. It's uh, yeah. I just we've we've all said that Doctor Who, yes, can be a bit eccentric, can be a bit like you said, out there and weird, and we've said that. But at the heart of it, it actually has can tell some brilliant serious when it needs two stories and that's what we need to see we need to because jody zero dipped into that this sort of ridiculousness this farcical nature Mm -hmm. and russell needs the first impression he needs to present for doctor who going forward is no doctor who can tell some actually complex really good stories and you shouldn't be you shouldn't just think it's a daft kids show because that Russell's also said in an interview that he doesn't, that it's not a kids show. Can so I... it's like, which are you having Russell? Well, he, he's right in the sense that it's, it's not a children's show. It's a family show, which is inclusive of children, which is, but that's again, that's another quote. That quote has been taken a little bit out of context, but it's also a really stupid thing to say publicly when you're right at this precise point in the, in the series coming back. Uh, Robert Payne uh, talking about the guy who plays, uh, again, we've got, we watched a sketch with a character called, the character was called Caster Villain. How are we supposed to take that seriously? Yeah, I know it's that. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And so if Russell was to say, if Russell was to say, this is a skit, this is a spoof, I'd still hate the fucking thing, but yeah. I wouldn't feel like, I wouldn't feel like it's yet another piece of my childhood that's just been desecrated. Hedda here in the live chat says, I didn't realise people took the plunger on the Daleks seriously before this special, because that's the only part of the Daleks they ever made fun of. I, I think it's it's the, a combination of things. It's the silhouette of the Dalek, the Daleks, I think, that makes it work. I think you, you take away one constituent part, and it probably all looks ridiculous, Gary. If you were to toss these things down, <laughs> down on a work counter somewhere, I don't know. Thank you for all the comments, everybody. There's some, there's some real, uh, yeah, but people just venting their spleen. It's completely understandable. Um, as uh, as bad as the skit was, says Gary Akers, the retro doc. I was more traumatised by the comedian playing Jodie Whittaker in the intro. Yeah, that's another one of the BBC's favourite comedians. Mel Guidenroik, was that her name? I always forget her name. And she was there with Jason Manford doing the thing these types always do. Oh, they did the dude. thing. Oh, you know. her. Isn't right. it all silly? Isn't it? You know, I've not got any time for either of these. Yeah. But you expect perhaps She's actually like, got I mean, boobs, whereas Jody does. <laughs> you, expect, <laughs> you expect people like this masquerading as, as entertainers to be on something like Children in Need. It's, it's fine. It's your price of entry in many <laughs> In many respects, uh, Kelly reminds us they did, they do, they did know how to make good skits. Time Crash was freaking brilliant. It was respectful. Yeah, it, was. it was funny. It was bittersweet. It had everything. And Gary, I, th- I that's thought right. that's what we were going to get. I was salivating. I thought we were going to get a slice, a sliver of that. And we got, a, instead of a link of a, a particular nasty kind of unflushable turd that's been around for 24 hours. And I think we're going to be talking about it for quite a while afterwards. Oh, yeah. I thought we would get like a little preview of the next special. I thought yeah, it was going to lead into that, you know, simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we did not get that. And it's pretty disappointing. But uh, like I said earlier, before, I, I got to go and I'm sorry, I got to take off. No, but, uh, the timing of this could not have been worse. It, it, all they had to do, and it was just, it's all a matter of willingness, is make Doctor Who. That's all they had to make. But now we know why Russell's came come back. Uh, After years of saying he didn't want to come back, he came back to use Doctor Who in a culture war that, uh, quite frankly, his side is losing right now. And it will be proven out. uh, The the specials will probably do well. It'll be proven out in the series as as we see how it does worldwide. Uh, Remember, this is going to be a Doctor Who that's supposedly made for everyone. Uh, And we just saw the South Park episode Gary, while we've got you here can i ask you one can you ask you a question you probably know the answer to that because i i don't when it comes to obviously doctor who has now got this international streaming home and you Mm -hmm. cover the culture war extensively on nerdwatching.com how do we know and do they ever publish figures so we have an indication of because we don't know obviously we'll know what the british ratings are because we always know how will we know and do they ever publish figures for how well shows do on Disney Plus, either particular to a, a given territory, such as your own in North America or globally, if we any any idea we can where we can find those figures? No, 
No, uh, there's there's some that can give you an idea. Uh, we have the Nielsen's, which mm-hmm. judge by minutes watched, and then there's Samba TV, which judges through some very complex algorithm how yeah. people watch it on uh, what's called Roku, basically their TVs. So they watch it through a system like a set top box or uh, th- through their system on their television. But we yeah. it, it doesn't judge like people watching it on their phones or people watching it on their uh, desktops or laptops. So no, we have no real, w- the only way you can really judge is how, how people are talking about it. Uh, you could tell house of the dragon was a pretty popular show that that's something that like rebuilt, not completely. Yeah, we still have time, but like recovered somewhat what they had lost from a, franchise that ended in disaster uh picard season three pretty popular show but it still wasn't watched by a lot of people it just wasn't it, you know it, it it brought some people back but it wasn't so uh we'll know pretty pretty quickly like how popular doctor who is in america and it's just not it, even with david Tennant coming back it's kind of going to be a fart in the wind uh people will watch it people will talk about it but by the time shooty comes uh, i i don't Hold because out. the mar- the marketing budgets for for shows, all shows, they do uh, a pro a, a pro a pro blah, 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 blah. they do allocate a certain amount of the marketing budget depending on each territory. I would imagine. So oh, they're putting money into this. The problem is it's on Disney Plus, and Doctor Who's been kicked around. Modern Doctor Who's been kicked around a lot. It was on mm-hmm. Netflix, and it was immensely popular on yeah. Netflix. Then it went to Amazon Prime, and just kind of people forgot about it. They just did. And Amazon Prime is a pretty big streaming service. Now it's on Disney Plus, which hasn't really gained subscribers here in North America. We're counting Canada, too, in almost a couple of years now. It's, it's subscriber growth has stopped. All the other growth is international. It's basically in India, and it's a lot of fudging of numbers, mixing it with Hotstar. But it's uh, it, on Disney Plus, it's just going to get buried. You know, you think uh, the fact that it's my worst nightmare, the Doctor Who's on Disney Plus is just terrible. <laughs> A lot of our viewers do feel the I same know, way, I have to say. To die, isn't it? <laughs> I've, I I've always been pretty indifferent, pretty indifferent to it, even though I did get a bit of a shock to the system when I saw the Disney logo next to, next to TARDIS for the first time a few weeks ago. That didn't feel good. But I've always been thinking, been pretty pragmatic because Disney Plus does have things like Bluey on for the kids. You know, they never interfered with that creatively, mm-hmm. at least not I've been aware of. So I oh, thought they have. Was- they have. Oh, they have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not allowed to say Ooga Booga on there. No. What? That Is that something they could say before? Oh, well, we could. Australia, it's made for Australia. <laughs> yeah. Australia. Australia. You can so, say anything you like, mate. You can say anything anymore. you like. Suppose we'll find out in a week. I could be wrong about all of this. You know? Well, uh, we'll find out in a week. Mate, thank you for your company. It's really good of you to, to, uh, right. to come on and spend some time with us. Uh, have a wonderful Thanks, stream. Uh, yeah, and I will we- see you all soon. Yeah, please come back soon. Let us know what you think of the specials. Yeah, we'll see you on the other side. (laughs) Ta da! (laughs) Enjoy the rest of your day, mate. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Can I just ask a question? Thank God he's gone. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sorry, carry on. With the the Daleks colorization, have I got it wrong or did I hear that? Russell T Davies is doing some intros for it, some new. Uh, no, it's it's there is new there is new material. I won't touch on that for the time being because we've got a show coming up on that in a few days' time. But there is new material Can't in there. Wait. It's not for the reasons that it's not for the reasons that people think. Uh, I've been told all about it. I've kind of been told can't in confidence. Wait. So I, I can't worry really speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> by, yeah. by Thursday, no, it's nothing like that. Mm. But by Thursday. We'll all be able to talk about it, and the reasons will become Fantastic. really quite apparent. It'll be quite obvious. Uh, Robert Payne mentioned something. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was something that wound me up. Robert Payne says Tennant filmed this on his birthday, which we do find out in Doctor Who Unleashed. Yes. Uh, so probably wanted to be eating cake instead. This may seem like a little thing, like a niggle, but it really winds me up if, that if this was filmed in April, Charlotte, and he mentions in the Doctor Who Unleashed thing, oh, this is going to be broadcast on November the 25th. If they knew which day this and day and date this was going to be broadcast back in April, why did they wait until a fortnight ago to tell us? Because they can't organise any marketing to save their lives. <laughs> it's been shocking. Yeah. I'm not surprised in the slightest. I didn't have enough money. Tell us what you really think, Charlotte. 
No, Back she's on, she's on the warpath. She, it's been a yeah. amazing team. Oh, I've never seen Charlotte so mad. Fried, uh, pra- 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 Queen Charlotte, Mad Charlotte. Everybody. No, pra- <laughs> perhaps there wasn't enough money in the budget to market it because it is possible because BBC is hemorrhaging money, aren't they? So you know, maybe it was. They that. are hemorrhaging yeah. license fee payers. Yeah. More importantly, mate. Yeah, yeah, you're quite right. No one watches broadcast TV in the UK anymore. Says Matthew Pounder, which is. Kind of true. The, the important fact is, and this is another thing that annoys me about it. Oh God, I could really go on about this. But yeah, you're quite right, Matthew. But more importantly, nobody under 45 now is persisting paying for their TV license. So the the BBC, are only they're targeting in all their marketing and a lot of their programming People in their twenties and thirties who are never going to buy a TV yeah, license. Yeah, the audience doesn't the exist. Yeah. So the people like your mom, Sarah, who watched that last night and probably thought it was okay, and you know, it was a bit silly, just a bit of fun. You know, it's fine for them. We, uh, we've, yes, that's that's very. It's important to remember that the broader television landscape that we are in a time of change. That's why I felt it was important because uh, I know that Gary Gary was the right person to ask about the platforms thing, John. Because I don't, I just don't understand it. I had no idea that Nielsen got figures from that. So at least there's some way you can track something. But it does seem to me to be that it's about private companies now selling you their product, which is understandable, and then getting back what they can. It's, and in some ways, it is kind of their own business how much money they make. But from from a, a TV license fee payers' point of view in Britain, I think we have always, as a as a, a nation, as a TV watching nation kind of liked to know if other people are watching it too and mm-hmm. if the license fee is proving value for money for a, people mm-hmm. on a broad level because I think the British people are very, are very fair-minded people and we can't abide waste and we can't stand hypocrites and hypocrisy and that's unfortunately something we're seeing a lot of from the BBC and I hate to say it because he, he has always been a creative hero of mine there's a lot of hypocrisy leaving the lips of Russell T Davies at the moment, uh, Richard Richard Brooks, it's clearly losing him too. The more I see of this era, the more I see it as a bait and switch for woke yeah. horror. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about it. This this five minutes of material, five minutes was woke. I don't bandy the word woke around mm. often, do I, Sarah? I try not to. No, no, you are. You're pretty. You're pretty liberal compared to. I to try others. and be fair-minded. Yeah. I mean, what to reiterate what you know charlotte said earlier it, there'll be a lot of people who have turned the back on doctor and maybe have come back for these specials because it's david Tennant, or maybe through us because we've all sat here grinning going oh this is going to be good yeah. and said so, right i'll give it a chance and they've watched this the first thing that comes out of david Tennant's mouth as the 14th doctor is that ridiculous line which you know we can just laugh at it and roll our eyes but then everything else is there any wonder people have just gone nothing's changed that's it i'm out done thank mm. that's I, it dan I, I rely on you for playing the positive card for balance <laughs> as it says <laughs> jamie knight charlotte i've got a comment here from dot martin too it says murray gold was channeling benny <laughs> hill <laughs> that was awful that music. Music. I know. bloody hell i, I don't believe it any. i was like obviously <laughs> you know <laughs> Charlotte? It was terrible. It was like Looney Tunes. Yeah. Yeah. That's because it was. It reminded me so much of the Donna thing. I know I've seen some people say, oh, it's just a skit. Why are you guys taking it seriously? I'm taking it seriously in the fact that this was a first sort of look in the door for a lot of fans, just to poke their head in and see what Doctor Who is since they put like they might have watched it since Jodie or even watched a bit of Jodie and then gone out and then come back. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot of fans who were on the fence. And this will I know a lot of fans who have actually watched this and gone, do you know what? I'm not going to get my hopes up and, and get disappointed again. This is all I needed to see. And it has done that. So this is actually it's serious because this has got some fans actually off now and they're not going to touch it and i think that's such a stupid move from russell that's like you mate. said then at the top of the show this was very much a taste of what's to come an appetizer and yeah it well it's backfired doesn't it 
We've got a late review in from Shah here, and she says, "I watched, I watched it, and the first ten minute, ten seconds was incredible. That's it. That's that's Shah's review, and that's, that's <laughs> not wrong. really saying that's really is saying something for Shah." Sure. Uh, yeah, we're, we'll be back with more in a couple of minutes, specifically to look at those comments, which I know people have been talking about it since the beginning. But uh, we're going to look specifically at uh, Doctor Who Unleashed when we come back from the Type 40 live ad break. So no golden faces and golden voices this time, time but a special week. piece. A spe you're going to well, you may you may need to tie an iron, Ian, because this is a special <laughs> a special piece of bespoke animation from friend of the show. Tony Farrell to uh, to remind us of where it all started and maybe this if if this can't make it all better maybe maybe it'll be a bit of a white pill. Fabulous Tony Farrell, Big T himself for that special piece of animation that he made for us for the 60th anniversary. And you can catch our podcast interview with Tony. He's the yeah, TARDIS facts and stat, stats guru. I'm not overselling that. There's nothing that Tony doesn't know about the original prop, the exterior and the interior, that classic original set from Doctor Who right from the very beginning back in 1963. You can get the audio edition across all major podcatchers there or the video edition of that show with some fantastic diagrams and plans and pictures. That's here on the Type 40 channel too, exclusively there. So go and knock yourselves out with that and enjoy words of wisdom from the man himself, the one and only Mr. Big T Farrell. Okay, we're, we're back. I know it's okay, Murray Gold. Stop playing that bloody awful music there, John. We're back <laughs> here with Type 40 Live, your live stream magazine format. Doctor Who show here, reviewing, aren't we? We're reviewing that first slice of all new Doctor Who that we got uh, just a day ago on Children in Need. Children in Need 2023. We thought it would bring back lots of memories of glorious past. Uh, but in the end, it sort of just brought back our lunch. I'm here with the panel. We've got, who have we got? We've got starry-eyed girl, Sarah Graham. We've got Hello. Ian David Dears, the mega geek. Hello. Matt Pot here. John Yulden there. And Queen Charlotte Shields, Shields too. Even Shields. And we're also, Shields. we've got somebody else. <laughs> somebody else is joining us as well, Ian. Oh, God. Up, Please. up night, Erling. I know. It's Simon Horton. Oh, thank God. Good evening to you all. How wonderful to be with you on this auspicious occasion. <laughs> Simon, it's I'm amazed. I'm amazed here. we can... I'm amazed that we've torn you away from watching the Doctor uh, Who Children Need special on repeat uh, on iPlayer for the last 24 hours. It, yeah, absolutely. I've had it on repeat for the past several hours. 
Um, but I thought, finally, I really ought to just sort of come and say hello, quite frankly. So I, I am sorry, folks. I've been out all evening um, and I've just got back in, uh, but I just had to, to just yeah. leap in. Uh, I, I mean, I have been saying to these guys all day, I, I just can't come on the show tonight. I'm sorry, because I'll just be negative and it'll be awful. And I'm just so <laughs> angry about it. I did it for you. Um, and Sorry, then, Ian. I did it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I did as well. And you've done it for me. Uh, so I really, 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 really had no intention of coming on tonight because I'm just so angry. Uh, but you know what? We're all friends. And so, how? how yeah. yeah, it, it's yeah. good to be here. It's all I'll say. Well, <laughs> you'll be, yeah, there's people in the live chat here. People have been following us on YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook and dropping some, yeah. Yeah, therapy, I think it is, a lot of it. Uh, Vanessa says it's true. Dan gives it every chance, every chance that he can get. Uh, but gar uh, Garbage agrees with me. This was a disaster. There will be people who will now be wa not be watching anything. Well, there will be people yeah. who yeah, will not now anything. not be not watching, watching anything from Russell today. Yeah, I kind of feel could be. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Garbage. I'm kind of almost there. Well, someone probably. on Twitter that actually said that to me, actually. He said that he's not really for that. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy, right? You see, for me, Sarah, uh, for, for me, Simon, sorry, the Destination Scarrow, this this five minutes that we got last night, this, this looks like, whilst some people have found it pretty inoffensive, Largely, this has been a marketing disaster for mm. all new Doctor Who, just as it was about to be relaunched. So what's your take on it? Oh, gosh. Uh, seriously, where would I even start? I'm not going to talk long about it because I'm sure you guys have all unpicked it to pieces. Um, I, I agreed. I saw um, Shah's comment that you put up a few minutes ago saying the first 10 seconds were great. I, I'm actually <laughs> not certain that the first 10 seconds were great in all honesty. I didn't like it from from the from the offset um but it worked it worked for the first minute it did work the sort of the the, the, the way they were doing the dramatic style i liked the idea of, of davros being pre-accident except we now yeah. discover that that's, that's all rubbish um but I, I i thought okay i can see whether it's not my cup of tea but i can see where they're going with it literally the second the doctor arrived I, I, honestly it was just car crash it's horrific the music in particular is the worst music ever in a Doctor Who episode, full stop. I've never heard, what was going on with the music? And I said oh, no. this, and I said this about Tales of the TARDIS, mm -hmm. that it felt like Disney does Doctor Who. This, and I'm sure I'm probably, I'm sorry if I'm probably repeating everything that everybody's already said. Oh. This, to me, was absolutely Disney does Doctor Who. This show looks more and more like Disney every minute. Now, this might have nothing to do with Disney. I don't know. And it doesn't really matter. What worries me is it, whether Disney have had their hands in this or not. It looks like they've had their hands in it. It looks like Disney Doctor Who. And so that's bad enough. I don't care whether they've had any involvement in this or not. I, I, honestly, I'm just, I, I'm, everybody's going to know that, that, that they know what I like in Doctor Who. And I'm just so, it was just awful. It's car crash television. It was embarrassing. Even it was excruciating. It was amateurish. Um, Julian Bleach was brilliant. Yep, I, I, I'll, I'll give him that. Julian Bleach was excellent. Everything else was just, uh, I, my, my heart just sank. Simon, is this, the, is this the worst performance that David Tennant has ever given, not just in this role, but possibly ever? What yes. on earth? Yes, totally. But, I mean, when you're given the lines that he was given, yeah. What what can you do? I mean, I'm assuming that Russell wrote this um, yes, rather did, yeah. than anybody else. Um, so so you know, you get those lines, and you get the direction, and you get the music. I I, I mean, I, what can what? Laurence Olivier would have struggled to look good in that sketch. It's just, the only one that comes out with any credibility at all is Julian Bleach. Um, and 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 for reasons that we will now go into that. Uh, it's it, his his performance is so caricatured and so horrific actually that what we're about to talk about in a minute just pulls it all apart anyway because because Russell T Davies doesn't want cliches yeah. and he doesn't want cop and yet that's what we got with Julian Bleach it was a great performance that's, it was so over the top it was so hammed up that's what I don't understand I I can't 
I can't resolve. I can't bring the the, the things that Russell says. You can't bring them together. You can't bring it together. I mean, no. it's possible that those interviews, the sound bites that we got on Unleashed last night, were probably recorded when the thing was recorded back in April. And and people do, but everybody's a bit of a contrarian. But even so, there should be some sort of harder party line. I just want to look at some of the comments here. That we, the comedy music was Ill, Ill judged. It was. The music yeah. has thrown everybody, hasn't it, Sarah? This is the last thing that people expect. And I remember, if you look back to that Born Again episode, that was a serious piece of drama. Yes, there was a bit of comedy yeah, was, in yeah. it because it was Rose reacting to the Doctor's regeneration. Yeah. The, you know, the regeneration going a bit iffy as it tends to do. And then them cr- and it leading into crashing back on Earth, which is how Christmas Invasion started. Mm. And I thought mm. that's that what we sense. were going to get. It was going to be a prelude to the Star Beast. And again, and it had comedy moments there. I mean, there was some joke about Jackie doing uh, meatloaf or some, some random thing. No, nut roast, wasn't it? Instead of a turkey, because she's like that. Um, mm. But the music was bang on. It was quiet when it needed to be. Yeah. It was dramatic when it needed to be. It was taken seriously. It was written seriously. It wasn't a skit, but it still kind of worked like that. And you could take it or leave it, whether you wanted to include it or not. And this is just, yeah, completely it doesn't, gone I the opposite. And, and they're older and wiser. And you think, well... I'll always say this, Doctor Who needs to grow up. Like, for instance, yeah, I agree. The, the TARDIS, the TARDIS smashes into the wall, right? He comes mm-hmm. out and he does his thing with the with the, the plunger and then he disappears. You still got the dent in the wall. So when what's his name also, comes Ian, through the Ian, was, also, yeah. mate, why did it crash into the wall? Exactly. Who knows? Why didn't well, it just no, materialize? No, no the point I'm trying to make is, is that Daphrus comes out, yet he doesn't see the huge hole in the wall and he doesn't question it. That's why. That's why the writing is so bad. Uh, you know, I'll tell you. Strange. I'll tell you what this feels like to me. Tales of the Tardis felt exactly the same. It feels like the kind of short film that would run before yeah. a Disney World ride while you yes, are queuing. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, the yeah, yeah, it feels like, yeah, yeah. This is the kind of thing that yeah. would play that you'd be watching while you're waiting in the queue for the Doctor Who simulator ride. And that's what worries me about this. That's why that's why the TARDIS crashes into the wall. It's it's all got that feel. The music again. It's just yeah. got that Walt Disney World feel of what you'd look at while you're waiting for the or or it would be even part of the the Doctor Who simulator ride. It, it's it's car it crashes. It reminds me of the Red Button what, Interactive. What the, are they thinking? They did. I don't, I don't know, Max. Wanna... The red, the red button stuff was better. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to look at some of the some of the comments here. We've got one here from Melon Rattler, which is a great name, who says "Ahoy!" So another "Ahoy!" Hi. <laughs> More seafarers Everyone's subscribed. Saying. Much needed Woo. therapeutic fandom common sense. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Kaman B ni- uh, B nineteen is that says time for Warhammer forty k. <laughs> To replace Doctor Who as the UK's flagship brand, I didn't realise that Warhammer was well, British. The behind that, there. especially now we've got Henry Cavill involved. Yeah, he's doing a movie. That'd be fine. <laughs> Ashar agrees with what Gary was saying. It does feel dated, and we don't need another Marvel. Even one Marvel is enough. Yeah, uh, yeah I completely, yeah. I completely agree. Uh, Peter Harrington has just binge watched uh, all three of the first Hartnell stories, mm. uh, but he's worried about Saturday. In it, but he's, he's going to give it a go now. And uh, Fair enough, Peter. And we've got Word Junior who says, uh, and this is something I, I want to just flag a little. I had the BBC sending letters to my flat, which was uni accommodation, say they were investigating us for watching the iPlay without a license, even though we should have played our license in a term payment. The, the letters that they send you, it's a sales tactic. Is, You'll get yeah. You get all these letters, all different colours, some of them black topped, some of them red topped when they want to take a certain tone with you. File them all, all where I file them, in the paper shredder. It's all the sales tactic. <laughs> the bin. <laughs> as long as you're not, yes. yeah, obviously, don't watch the telly and don't watch iPlay unless you've got a license. Don't do those things. If you're not doing those things, they've got no busy ch- business chasing you up, hounding you and making your life a misery or pestering you with letters. They tell lies in these letters. We know that. We proved this on this show. Yes, so please, any, anybody, if, you, if you're worried about, the, about any letters that the BBC or Capita or TVC, TV licensing is sending you, get in touch with me. I guarantee that I've got some in my files here. I will, I will go through them and I will explain to you why you don't need to worry about them. But please never lose any sleep over any letters from TV licensing. That is my TED talk done now for the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
so they followed as if as if that wasn't enough. They hadn't spoilt us enough. They dropped several mini chunks of the brand new Doctor Who sister show, Doctor Who Unleashed, all went across social media. Uh, it's co uh, co presented, no, presented, isn't it? Presented by this guy Stephen Stephen Powell, who seems a nice enough fella. You know, I mean, him and Russell and Russell T Davies and uh, David Tennant, they seem to get on just fine, and that's all well and good. You know, I think it actually helps having somebody personable and normal. He does seem like a normal bloke fronting this thing. That's the good news. Uh, but when you actually watch these clips back, there was one in particular. There was about four, I think, that have been put out all in all. But there's one in particular. One, I must be honest. Only one. There's, there's one, Simon, that's really wound people up. And rather than me describing it, and I know we've probably all seen it, I figured it could be best if we just played it and uh, and then... Then we'll we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about one. Yeah. Not um, again. <laughs> Give me a paper bag. <laughs> I'm just going to go and be sick. Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> Today, Davros is looking quite different. We had long conversations about bringing Davros back because he's a fantastic character. Time and society and culture and taste has moved on, and there's a problem with the Davros of old in that uh, he's a wheelchair user who is evil, and I had problems with that, and a lot of us on the production team had the problems with that of associating disability with evil and trust me there's a very long tradition of this i'm not blaming people in the past at all but the world changes and when the world changes doctor who has to change as well so we made the choice to bring back davros without the facial scarring and without the wheelchair or his support unit which functions as a wheelchair i say this is how we see davros now this is what he looks like this is 2023 this is our lens this is our eye things used to be black and white they're not in black and white anymore and davros used to look like that and he looks like this now and that we are absolutely standing by i think because it's children in need night it's a night where Issues of disability or otherness or being excluded from society come right to the front of the conversation. So of all the nights to make this change, I think it's absolutely vital to do this. And I'm very, very, very proud of the fact that we have. Okay, cut that. Cut then right. don't oh. pick the bleeding character, Russell. I was just like, I'm sorry. What an idiot. If you, if you can conflate uh, disability with evil, there's something wrong with you. I agree. Yes. And you're not a sane person. <laughs> Have you had and that it? says a lot more about you has, as a person. I agree, Sarah. Has he not twigged that actually what he's done is drawn attention to something that was not a problem to begin with? Th this was never thought about. He has he has created a problem that was not there in the first place. By drawing attention to this, he's created yes. the problem. Is he that thick? Russell, I hope you're watching this. Are you really that, that thick that you think? that this is a problem and that you haven't created this. It just makes me so angry. I couldn't believe it when I watched that clip. I I do think he comes across as somebody who's been completely ideologically captured. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's one no. of the most ridiculously woke things I've ever heard in my life. He starts it quite reasonably. The world changes. Well, we, yeah, the world does change, Russell. Everybody knows that. We can see it change. We can feel it change. Yes, yeah, tell us something we don't know. And when the world changes, Doctor Who has to as well. Yeah, by well, moving Doctor forward, Who, not Doctor going Who back into the past and finding problems can and I, altering it. Can I just counter Russell there and say, oh, right, I, I get what you're saying, but it's acceptable, though, for the villain of the piece to be a white male then, is it? So, yeah, I, 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 and let's be clear about this, John, as well. It's a white male with, let's say, a receding hairline. So are we going to say that all, saying, all white males with receding hairlines, which they can't do anything about that either. Yeah. Poor old Julian Bleach cannot do anything about the fact that he's got a receding hairline yeah. and a widow's peak. <laughs> so are we yeah. saying now that all white males with widow's peaks are evil? Because by lo exactly. Russell's brilliant, wonderful, gorgeous logic, thank you, Russell, for gifting it to the world. Yeah. That's what you're basically saying. Nice one, Russell. Well done. Yeah. Good. I mean, me being an optimist, Simon, when I saw that stupid uh, statement there, Russell isn't a stupid man. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure that. Out. <laughs> Jury's I'm not, out. I'm honestly, not you sure. You know, that. again, again, I I love his work. Blah 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 blah. But I have never. That it's a ridiculous statement to make. Uh, it certainly comes across as uh, wildly off base and and uh, completely sort of um, yeah, wrapped up in perceived offensiveness and it's as if he hasn't actually had a conversation with a real person in quite some time which I, f I find that just bizarre but this idea Davros used to look like that and now he looks like this and we are standing by it I had a moment and somebody mentioned this in the chat earlier on Simon about how watching new Doctor Who now is an exercise in sort of managing 
how many things you could ignore and get past to carry on enjoying it. And I feel the same about this. I found myself thinking after about half an hour, I think, well, you know, you think you process it and you think, did he really just say that? Did he really mean it? And afterwards, I think I thought to myself, well, you know, well, Davros has only been in it twice in the last 20 years or twice in the last 35 years. So, uh, well, yeah. but I shouldn't have to think like that. This man is he's just tearing away at this mythology, as you say, creating problems that just aren't even there. And into the bargain, actually insulting fans over on social media. Yeah, the, the, I mean the social media comments are, were just terrific. I, I mean, I, I watched, I watched the, 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 this, this five minute clip as it unfolded, and I was immediately thinking, well, hold on, there's a problem here. I, I, I immediately zoned up in on the fact that this had to be obviously a pre-Genesis Davros because he wasn't disfigured. But then they started. He started talking about the Mark III travel machine, and I'm thinking, no, hold on. In that case. Russell is wildly off on this one because yeah. because this should be pre Genesis and the and the accident happened way 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 before Genesis. It didn't happen five minutes mm -hmm. before the Doctor lands on Scara in Genesis. So suddenly I'm thinking, okay, this doesn't make sense. Well, now of course it does make total sense because what Russell has actually done. Let's be clear about this, and he's being clear about it. He's rewritten Terry Nation's yeah. script. That's what he's yep. done here. He's literally rewritten Tonation script because that scene goes the children in need, takes place at the exact point of Genesis of the Daleks. That's when it takes place. So what we're basically saying is, yeah, we're throwing Terry Nation's script out. We're throwing out Genesis of the Daleks that for many, I actually am not that, I don't like Genesis of the Daleks as much as a lot of people do. But a lot of people, for a lot of but people, it's, it's, but it's, 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 it's seminal, but it's seminal. But it's seminal Doctor Who, seminal. Simon, and You're also, right. and also, it is a founding stone of his own Time War story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, what he's done is he's literally said Genesis of the Daleks is no longer correct; it doesn't count anymore. Terry Nation scripts don't count because Davros should have looked like this. And so, this that we're now looking at—I mean, I'm assuming. The, 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 on Russell's instructions now, I'm guessing that maybe Genesis of the Daleks, when it goes up on iPlayer now, will have to have some sort of uh, disclaimer of fr in front of it that people who are wheelchair users might be offended by this story. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll be nice right one, on Russell. So, so it's the fact that he's just completely thrown Genesis of the Daleks out, rewritten it. He's ha he's the he's got the arrogance. To think that he has that right. Do I have the right? We're into, we're into yeah. Genesis. Well, I, I want to ask you. Have I that right? I want Darren, to ask you, Russell, I want to, ask to you rewrite you. history and rewrite Terry Nation, who I'm yeah. sorry, Russell, but was a better writer than you are. Well, I want to ask Charlotte just for a quick moment about this because obviously none of us are in, none of us are wheelchair users. But a couple of people, there, there are several people who watch our show that, that are in wheelchairs that that, uh, that I live have with family disabilities. member. Uh, we oh, have yeah, family yeah. members. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, that, that are in wheelchairs. Yeah, I'll, I'll say in? sort of two things because I do need to go. If, if people who know me know I'm very good friends with Daniel, Scottish Davros, uh, he was in tears. He got that upset because of what Russell did. Because what it is, this is erasure. This is yeah. Russell taking a character which you could take which you could technically say is a disabled character. And he's saying doesn't exist anymore. That's erasure. That's not representation because you know what true representation is. And this is what I think has got a lot of people upset. And I've seen it in this chat. And if I talk to, to probably Daniel and others, it would probably be a similar sort of thought. People who are in a chair or are disabled or whatever word you want to use, they can be anything. They can be any type of person. They can be any personality. They are not, they, they can be good. They can be bad. Russell is saying you can only be one type of person mm -hmm. if you're disabled. You mm -hmm. can only be a good person. You can only Brilliant. be a hero. Brilliant. Because yeah. you know what? Daniel and the people in this fandom, they're incredible. They can be so many things. And what Russell's doing is denying that by doing this yeah good point and that's what's disrupt and that's what's horrible about this and that's what's actually offensive and i and he does not i think russell is thinking he's doing something good but actually he's been incredibly he's gone the full circle 
that he's trying to not offend, but he's actually being what he thinks he isn't. Which is the whole woke kind of quandary that people who who follow that ideology constantly find themselves in. Charlotte, while 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 I was watching it, I had that kind of icky feeling that I knew there was something about it that was distasteful and not, and I couldn't quite put it into words. But you've summed it up so 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 well, uh, in in such a sobering way. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's it's this thing of. It's it's like Russell thinks he can control what's allowed to be on television for one group yeah. of people. Think about that. You've well, got also, one person, one production team, saying well also, this is the only way. Well, also, Charlotte, don't you, think, bit... don't, don't you think he's trying to tell people what to think? That's what he's telling mm-hmm. us all. We're not intelligent enough ourselves to think. Yes, and so because, he's telling us what we need to what, and what our needs thing. to be. Do you think, Charlotte? Yes, and I think because also he's conflating being disabled with morality. Being disabled mm-hmm. is nothing to do with that, mm-hmm. and that's what he's saying here by saying Davros was a problem. Yes, that was his words. It's a problem. Yeah, yeah. it has to be fixed. And the other so, thing, Charlotte. Charlotte don't you think well, all I was going to say was, doesn't it doesn't don't we think it's bizarre that nobody even th- nobody's ever thought of Davros as disabled or in no, a wheelchair? This is the <laughs> thing. Awesome about that. Neither yeah, has Simon, there are people that have cosplayed as as Davros. Does that mean that they're you know they're being that, offensive? They, yes, exactly. Sorry, they Dan, love it. I mean, well, what what strikes me about it. about the character, Matt? You know, I, I remember so Davros is what. Yeah. Good okay. night, please, Charlotte. Charlotte, please, Thank please you. send Daniel our love. You know we love him. And he's got such yeah. a wonderful yeah. sense of humour that he called himself Scottish Davro. I just love him. Yeah. And I just want yeah. him to and know you know, that yeah. we all. We, we, we're love giving him a big him. thumbs up. I had a message from Daniel vibe. earlier earlier on, so I know I know he's upset. Yes, but yeah, Scottish Davroses are the best yeah. Davroses. Everybody Charlotte. knows. They that. Are. Thank See you for your call, Charlotte. Have a bit more yeah. fun next week. Bye bye. What what struck me, you see, is you know, John, after watching this this series and, and that character, Davros was one of the very first characters that I ever drew from Doctor Who. You know, I scribbled him onto my bedroom wall. And and so I've always I've always loved this character. And so, you know, it speaks of we childhood to me. Them. And I, I appreciate yeah. the world does move but does move on, the world changes. But I I just think Russell's comment is I don't like banding words around like stupid, but it Stu- blanket stupidity and yeah, woke woke nonsense. Yeah. You can the counter it straight away, Dan. Down. You can counter it straight away. Sorry to interrupt there, because literally you then go, "Well, are you going to give the Daleks legs then?" Because it's claim it, it's known take? in the story yeah. that he created the Daleks in his image, yeah. and the frame yes. at the bottom of the Dalek is Davros's frame. So you put that one out, you then back yourself into a loop there. Well, well, Do you think also, he was, John, was was he was he pointing at characters like Blofeld, for example, in the Bond films, as an example of sort of hokey kind of kitsch characters that were perhaps I yeah thinly he's scared. bold. So does that mean that we're evil? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah boys. Yeah. Yes, you're getting amazed, Matt. Yes, Matt. You are evil, Matt. You are evil. He's doing the dog. Go on, sorry, Dan. Well, he's he's the thing. See how I feel about it is that Davros he isn't in the, he, he isn't evil because he's in the wheelchair. He ends no. up in a wheelchair because of his um, hubris and his his yeah. political uh, devotion and blanket belief in something in, in bringing about something which was evil. But he's not he, he the wheelchair the disability has nothing to do with him but, being but evil. Dan, it's Dan, not a wheelchair he, though, is it? It's not. A it's not a wheelchair. You're well, right. I, I never it's ridiculous. And they had to. It's and a did you notice they had to That's clarify right. that in the interview? They had to quickly say it's a support system which is used as a wheelchair. The mental gymnastics on display. Correct. Yeah, it's like a yeah. dialysis machine. <laughs> People walk yeah. around with dialysis machines, and it's like yeah. if you took that away, you know. But I'm, yeah, I'm a big what I was going to say is, right? does the BBC have? Um, do, do you think, Dan, that 
what um, Russell's T was saying was in line with what the BBC was, is was trying to promote as well. BBC dictates. Yeah. Sadly, I'd like to say that it is, but no, mm. sadly, I feel so. that Russell has been completely captured right. by the woke, by right. wokeism yeah. and has just totally lost all perspective. Mm. But my feeling, my feeling is with this, with Russell, I, I think Charlotte just mentioned a minute ago that, that, that Russell's doing it because he thinks it's the right thing to do. Yes, I don't think he does. I think he knows very deliberately what he's doing here. He's deliberately trying to bait people. He knows he's week. going to be watching some of these videos and he's loving it. He's punching the air because he loves the fact that we're angry about it. And that's one of the reasons why I almost didn't want to come on tonight because he wants us. He, he's going to call us all, all Hi, gammons. Russell. All gammons. Yeah. He's going to talk, <laughs> call us all gammons because he will be He will be saying, oh, this is brilliant. I've got the Doc 2 fans all in a row. He's, he's going to be clapping his hands because he's that stupid that he can't realise what he's doing. And I genuinely think that he, he's doing this deliberately to just be bloody minded. And he knows the reaction it's going to get. I, I question that he's actually, I, I question that anybody can be so woke as to think that Davros is a problem. So I think he's deliberately going out there looking for problems just to bait well, people like well, us. You know what's coming next, don't you? It's going to be the attack and the invasion of the cyber people, you know. Yes, well, of course That's it is. Thing, isn't it? It's coming. I can but see no, it. Uh, Do you know but, Gary Akers said something today on another stream I was watching, and I hope it's not true. He was saying that he suspects that when they show, um, you know, that, that – uh, uh, dramatization of um, William Hartnell. What's it called again? I can't remember. Adventures in Space and Time. They, 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 he said that they're going to replace uh, Matt Smith with Shooty at the ending. I hope that's not true. I so, really hope that's not true. So, um, yeah. Doesn't that strike you as well that if they're now doing these sort of things, they are running out of ideas for scripts mm. and stories because they're going the whole panda route. But if they are doing stuff like that, they're just going back to stuff that a lot of people loved and going, do you know what? We'll just stick him in there and we'll just stick her in there. And, you know, it's, mm. it's diminishing but, returns. Isn't I, it? That's what they're I, doing um, now. I just want to yeah. uh, quickly address the live chat because I've done a spectacularly bad job of keeping trap. It's been very busy with comments in the live chat and conversations going on between all our, all our friends and companions there in the live chat across YouTube, Rumble and Facebook. Thank you for all of that. Uh, but because it's been so busy, it's been very difficult to keep track of anything and, and to stop it from jumping. But I do appreciate all the comments. I just realized we're, we're like 40 odd minutes behind. Uh, but um, we've got here a comment from David Mullen who says that Russell uh, Russell mentioned that others in the, in the department had a problem with Davros in a chair. Yeah, and they I told believe, him to have a problem. I believe he, that's probably he told true. them. Sorry, he told them to, that they got a problem. That's what it'll <laughs> be. Because, I can believe that there's younger people that may have a problem. Looking but for as problems. a sixty-year-old man, looking for problems, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Look, you've got. He should looking for something. wrongs, perceived wrongs to right, Sarah. Whether yes. they're really there or not. Well, that's the walk ethos, isn't it? That's their crusade. Cru yes. At the end of the day, I'm still looking forward to the Saturday Doctor Who, see how that plays out. And, right, you know I'm not yeah. knowing. I know you are. I know you. I know. I, know. I, was, I was on a nightmare to begin with. I must yeah. under, underline that I don't feel that this is any real reflection on what we again, what we're getting over the next two or three Saturdays. The content will be will be wildly different. But the, but mm. where they've really shot themselves in the foot here is marketing. They had a captive audience of millions of people yesterday and they showed them this. It's after such keeping everything such so close to their chest for nearly for eighteen months plus to then show them a a, a turd like that it's un, unforgivable. Davros is also a big favourite of Monique M in the chat, mm. and I've got a comment here from Will who mentioned something that I wanted to bring up, and I know not everybody listens to this stuff. I was interested. Actually, you were just mentioned being a big Finnish listener, didn't you, John? Were you yeah. about to mention the fabulous miniseries was, I Davros? Yeah. From a few years I ago. Dav Ross. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's great. Brilliant. I recommend it. It's, it's brilliant. Extraordinary, isn't it? You oh, you, you you're you're saying. Saying. Yeah, and I'm not a big Finnish fan, but this is a remarkable piece of work. I've listened to it a couple of times, and it's brilliant. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. And of and course, it, Russell T. Davis is just, I mean, I know that sometimes these things are, are, are said to be canon and sometimes they're not, but Russell has just taken a giant whiz on this, yeah, even yeah. though. 
But mm. that shows you, well, well, not shows you, but when you listen to that, it gives you everything you know about Davros before yes. he was mutated. He is an evil individual. Um, I just, I just want to say that um, Doctor Who, right, is the only show that actually has real old-fashioned monsters. You know, like it doesn't matter how bad it was done, but they really will. Uh, they really were old-fashioned. You know, monsters with big teeth, monsters yeah. with faces that was crumbled, no yeah. eyes, one eye. You know, one arm, suckers. Do you know what I mean? Anymore. That kind of stuff. And Doctor Who mm. is, is famous for that. And They're to take designed. that away from Doctor Who, I agree. It's like taking yeah. a bow tie away from James Bond. Do you know what I mean? Well, it doesn't it's, make any yeah. sense. Is, is that the nature of the word sort of monstrous and and a, a lot of nightmares? Because a lot of people, when we have nightmares, when we have nightmares as human beings. Sarah, we dream about stuff like our, our teeth falling out or we, a, lot, you know, a lot of the time it's things happening to us, to who we are, something mm -hmm. taking away from our being. And if we can't, if storytellers can't chime in, line up and exploit nightmares and dreams, mm. then isn't that going to make storytelling compromised at best and a waste of time at worst? Well, yeah, and and it's astonishing hearing this from a writer and a and a pretty darn good one as well, mm. who comes up with all these fleshed out characters, good and evil, and everything in between, mm. to just to limit Davros to just one box. It's I, absolutely I, mine. But he's, he's like Charlotte was saying, and Simon was saying, that, you know, he's a fully formed character. He's got layers. Is yes, he is evil, but it, there's reasons. He's got one evil. eye. He's got no eyes. Uh, and he's, and you know, he's, <laughs> you know, but he, he, he's such a, you know, he's like the, he's the negative to the doctor. That's why the interactions are always so fascinating. Again, well, the reason why Doctor Who is so popular, especially in the 70s, is because they showed us monsters. They didn't screw around with it. They showed exactly. us ugly things. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I must be honest. I actually find it when, when, when I saw that idiotic interview with Russell today, I actually found it quite depressing. I genuinely found yeah, I did as well. with it. I found it depressing to think that that character that we're currently looking at on screen in effect, no longer exists in Russell's brilliant, brave new world. I find that actually really, really depressing because that right. character, same as you, Dan, that really le left a massive impression on me mm. when I yeah. first saw Genesis of the Daleks when I was, what was I, about seven or eight. Um, and to think that that's now been taken away from us and, and bless him, Russell, thank you, Russell, for doing this. You've saved me from myself. You've, you, you've <laughs> cleaned my world up. Thank you. Thank goodness for doing it because I was so misguided. I didn't know what I was doing, like mm. uh, enjoying watching a character like this. Yeah. So we have to thank him for that. You know, he's done us all a favour. Well, hasn't I mean, is it going to continue, Simon? I was watching Caves the other night. I had to watch it to calm down. Yeah. Like, is it going to, what about, you know, well, Check. Check. No. Well, let's Richard, Richard, yeah. Richard Brooks makes the statement here in the live chat on YouTube, erasure is not representation. Electric Bull, also watching on YouTube, says uh, confides as someone who people would call woke. So this is somebody who, who uh, casts himself as somebody who does align partly with that ideology. Yeah. Electric Bull believes that Russell has oversimplified what Davros is. So this is losing people. And I've seen it this on X, on X today. People who supported Chris Chimnall think this speech by Russell is nuts. Jack Thursby says, Davros is my all-time favourite science fiction villain. Russell T. Davis' idiotic, insensitive comments are unforgivable. Indeed, says Lord Thoth. Um... Uh, there's a, there's yeah, just a, people are not liking this at all. There's, there's a comment. There's a comment there from from T Draw Productions. Who's who's Tom? Hello, Tom. I feel offended because I have ASD. You know, this is the problem. You, you, I, what what Russell has opened up here, boy, is this a can of worms? Well, I, in effect, what 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 we what we're saying is that everything everything can be seen as offensive in Russell's mm. mad mad world, uh, and so what is acceptable to Russell and uh, the way he conducts that interview, in effect, he's acting like he's playing God. Uh, he can do it, and so he's going to do it. it, it that's why Davros has changed, because he can be, because that, because Russell T. Davis can do it, so why wouldn't he? And and that, that's what worries me so much. You know, 
bless him, Russell has gone power mad, hasn't he? That, and I, looks did, like I remember, I remember that saying that this months ago. It's not I, a good said, sign. I wonder whether Russell, whether whether Russell being invited back for a second stint will be will will send him power crazy. And and by this I, interview I, I, and the way he conducts it. It's worrying, isn't it, Dan? I, th- I think, be. Simon, I think he's certainly lost a certain sense of perspective and I think he's lost his edge and his ear for where the culture is really at and what the British public are really thinking. So now I'm convinced, I'm getting convinced that Shooty's full season is going to be full of, of lots of digs against Brexit and GB News and all sorts of stuff like that. It's it's going to be real low hanging fruit for a man who is mm-hmm. five or six years behind the curve on what genuine British people really think. The wheel snakes is in the live chat here with a fantastic icon, but says I'm in a wheelchair and I never thought Davros was in a wheelchair. No, why would you, mate? Didn't. Nobody wasn't in a wheelchair. Nobody ever thought of him as in a wheelchair until Russell opened his mouth. And he's one of these unique villains, you know, when he turned up, you were like, this is so different. He's not coming to stomp your head in. He's not, he's not going to convert you. He's just very, very intelligent. And he's working out a way to wipe you and everybody else out. We love a bit of cheesiness as well. I mean, Davros was very cheesy, right? And obviously the way he went about things was, was, wasn't very nice. But again, I would say that what a, what a villain, no eyes, one big blue eye in the middle, one hand. (laughs) You know, yeah. terrifying. You know, so you're scary, right? Yeah, and, and, and how, you know how he speaks and everything. I mean, exactly. So, I mean, a lot of. Oh, we got, well, here we go. That's yeah. Sarah. That's a brilliant point. Are we going to? And there are lots of people out there who have to use uh, electronic voice that's boxes right, yeah. to speak. Yeah. So presumably that's offensive to them, you know. Yeah. Oh, what about people that that, that that wear leather jackets? So is it is it offensive to people <laughs> that wear leather jackets? Everybody wears a leather jacket is clearly a villain. You know, where does it end, Russell? But, but following on from that, you, you then go back to what I said a few minutes ago. It's diminishing returns because you then end up with a show that everybody looks and sounds the same. Yeah. So yeah. there's no conflict. Yeah, it's homogenous. So, so the people are going to tune out of it because... There's no excitement in it. So yeah. Doctor Who comes fair, out of John, his uh, comes out and, and of his TARDIS and then goes, yeah. "Nothing happening here." And then he closes it. And he goes, well, <laughs> this, is <laughs> <quite> <laughs> this is something like that we notice. This is something that we do notice. This lack of conflict and this lack of uh, of colour. Uh, in in characterization, generally speaking, I would never have thought I'd, ex- I'd even be considering this from Russell T. Bloody Davies. But this yeah. is something we see in other genre shows all the time, particularly under the Disney brand, yeah. which is caused, which is diluted to such an extent. Loads of people agree with you there, John, about the and you, Simon, about the uh, the I Davros audio series. You can get that at a in a bundle now at BigFinish.com. It's a, uh, a discounted it price. Cancelled. By Russell. Until, yeah. until yeah. Russell, yeah. until Russell yeah. deletes well, it, like he's tearing up a book. Now. Yeah, yeah. So get, get your physical and copies now, bud. One I'm, thing I wanted to point out um, is it's really bizarre that, you know, we've had this big fuss of the universe, who universe and having classic who, but, you know, all the, well, nearly all of it. Yeah, and he says he's really proud of it. Really proud of it. And then he, he's, he's, you know, what about these viewers that he's trying to entice in, especially with this colorized Dalek? Or are going to think, oh, the Daleks are really cool. I love this. I'm going to go and watch some classical. Aha, and, say, and now they say, oh, no, no, no. Now you've got to be embarrassed about Genesis. Yeah. You've got to be embarrassed about this seminal yeah. story. Uh, just like, you Absolutely. know, with. Um, William Hartnell, it's the same beat. Yeah. Oh, you know, you, you, we're embarrassed that we've got all these white men that have been the doctor. We've got to change that. And again, it's I, just finding problems that weren't yeah, there before. That, you know, you're you're absolutely right, and you, it's you you're right as well, Simon, because it's exactly the same. It lines up with exactly what Sarah's just said. Where does it end? We've got a, a comment, a series of comments here in the live chat from somebody new to the channel this evening. I think Heather, thank you for your company, Hello, Heather. Hello. And earlier on, Heather was posting a lot about oh. how they, uh, how much they enjoyed the special. And we've had, and we did, we did Fair have enough. comments. We did have comments from several people who did enjoy it for one yeah. reason or another. Yeah, that, that's that. That's nothing wrong with enjoying it. And if there's one place that people can come and be sure that they're not going to be vilified for that, it will always be Type 40. But Hedda does confide here, you have all changed my mind about the Davros change. I can appreciate that it, that it was offensive to people like our friend Daniel Leach, who calls himself Scottish Davros. And I'm sorry about that. You don't need to apologise, Hedda. No, 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 no. Yeah. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, and if you enjoyed it, again, yeah, it's fine. But it's one of those things that hearing perspectives like uh, like Daniel's coming from Charlotte, it really does make you think. I'm really pleased that people have enjoyed it. Of course I am. Uh, and to be honest, when I when I finished watching that, that that's a little five minute uh, um, before, obviously, I'd seen the Russell T. Davis interview. It wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't like it. I thought it was badly made. But I was like, oh, well, do you know what? There'll be people out there that have enjoyed it. And I, I, yeah. I was quite happy to move on. And it was only because I saw that Russell T. Davis interview and boy, did I see red with that. And it completely changed my opinion of yeah. that five minutes. And to be Entirely. fair, Simon, in the comment section, since we went live at eight o'clock, eight o'clock on Saturday evening here, uh, most of the comments weren't even about the Minnesota itself. They were about Russell's uh, uh, soundbite to Doctor Who Unleashed last night. And that's what's got up, peop up people's nose. It's the doomsday effect. Yeah. It's the it's the doomsday effect. Uh, another character that it brought to mind with me as well wasn't just a character from Doctor Who, but, uh, but this character from uh, from the film Unbreakable, mm. played yeah. by Samuel Jackson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who is um, obviously I'm sure people have seen this film. It's been it's out like twenty me when years. I wake up in the morning. Mr. Glass. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, through this film, though, Ian. Mm. Uh, this character of, of Glass, one of the reasons why he's so fascinating is that sort of perceived benevolence and the way, obviously, uh, this director, M. M. Night Shyamalan, I think his name is Shyamalan. He, 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 he powers, mm -hmm. he powers a lot of his stories with this sort of, this idea and this, this suspension of disbelief. And there's, he, he, he was also the guy who became famous for popularising or repopularising twists in the tale mm. of movies and things like that. So you could say that there, that these films are, are superficial in some respect and manipulative. But the reason why this character worked so well and why they ultimately ended up bringing him back for a, a couple of couple of sequels, wasn't it, in the end, and finished with one, Glass, yeah. formed a sort of trilogy with, with the split and then Glass, mm. is because of that contrast, the complexities to this character. He wasn't just some cackling bad guy in a wheelchair. This is a guy with real depth, mm -hmm. and and whilst and whilst uh, Samuel L. Jackson has never played Davros, <laughs> uh -huh. um, I think it's the oh, same it kind of I think it's the same kind of uh, the same kind of villainy where well, you he, see he, where it came from. Every well, he, villain he, he caused um, he caused all the accidents to find Bruce Willis, didn't he? That was yes, his, uh, that with was a, with an end yeah. goal which he viewed as as just, yes, just and in, and yeah. for the greater broader good. Yes, it, it, uh, so. So sorry, that, that's I'm very dumb. No, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just saying that. So, so um, the way he sees it is that he's doing good. Uh, he's doing he's doing all this stuff so he can reach Bruce Willis, so he can ben be benefit mankind. That's the way he was seeing it, right? But then, then again, it is quite evil to kill people, which he didn't understand. It's the same thing with that. Well, Davros yeah. thinks he's right, right? The other, so, the other great villains is... don't realize they're evil, do they? They, they don't they, realize. They don't the other thing that's really interesting, Richard Brooks makes a really interesting comment in the chat uh, about Sill. Uh, Russell T. Davis presumably would mm. recast Sill. Now, mm. what's really interesting about this is 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 uh, Nabil Shaban has gone on record uh, as, as saying um, that people of uh, that had a, a disability that he worked with at the time that he was doing Doctor Who said, uh, you know, are you sure you should be doing this because of the fact that in effect they, they could be making out, it could be read as people with a disability how, uh, are all evil. And mm. Nabil Shaban, who has, bless him, got a very severe disability, fought back against it and said, Look, it's a damn well written part. It's it, you know, I am I am disabled, and yet I'm happy and comfortable to do this because it's a really well written part. And so, don't look for offence where offence wasn't meant in the first place. And mm. that's a brilliant point. And, and Bill Shaban knows better than anybody He's, to talk about this stuff. It's funny mm. you should mention the bill because he's spoken about it today as well. He's spoken oh, about okay. this very topic today. What's he said? He's he's highlighted the fact. That although he uh, Nabil himself is um, is disabled, that Sill was not. Yeah, uh, Sill was uh, was an amphibious alien creature from another world, mm -hmm. and there were millions of his own race who looked exactly like him, and and they their defining feature. He, he said, "I've got an exact quote from him here." He says that I was reluctant to play Sill as a disabled character, as that would be reinforcing the traditional stereotype of deformity, disability, 
ugly, scarred infirmity with evil. So he he does agree with Russell up to a point. I, I have mm-hmm. to. Okay. But happily, happily, I was able to prote- portray him without being disabled in the human sense because of his because of Cyril's actual actual nature. Mm-hmm. But he says that whenever again, this is the other side to it. Nabil did say whenever I see Davros, I cringe because I know the BBC were ta- were talking about people like me in wheelchairs or had deformities or infirmities or knew that most TV viewers prefer not to see us in their primetime shows. You see, he claims that many disabled actor friends got hate mail from ignorant viewers, moaning that such people offend them or put them off their evening dinner if they're watching their favourite show. Um, So Nabil feels differently. Uh, I would say, and I, I mean... He's highlighted a difference there between a character like Davros and a character mm-hmm. like Syl. Uh, but um, I mean, I would argue I would imagine- that, it, it, that it isn't necessarily correct from the point of view that Davros is not, as we've said, he's not shown um, as no. a disabled person in his birth. You've got to remember, too, because um, I, I don't know if this is canon or whatever it's, it's been actually thing, but to me, he's never had legs. Yeah, exactly. That's well, the reason yeah, why. Exa- he- that's, that's what Nabil was saying, yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's like, well, how are you supposed – what's he supposed to walk around on his hands? What? Uh-huh. what? Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. he's, it's going to have to happen. Uh-huh. You know, they just can't They just can't ignore it. They can't uh-huh. ignore the, this accident that's going to happen to him. They can't change it. And that was actually one of the things I was waiting for, David Tennant, to actually cause the accident. That's what well, I that's thought. That's not going to happen. Really thing the end no. Well, but if they did, now, the accident is never going to happen. Yeah, Russell T. said Russell's that world. just now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, said it's, it's, no, and said that's we're what I'm going saying. forward. We're going forward yeah. with this. But the accident that's, is gone. It's out of Before I saw this interview, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of so shocking. We've got a comment here from we've got a comment here from John Green, uh, one of the one of the two guys who runs the brilliant uh, website and YouTube channel Dalek Six Three Eight Eight. If you're hello. not subbed, if hello, you haven't hello. got their site book, if you haven't got their website bookmarked, you really should. And John says, I think they should turn all Daleks into humans. It would make my job easier. <laughs> I, I think it's only fair to mention as well. Russell Russell knows this. There are plenty of positive examples of disabled characters in Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. History. Yeah. On the side, I'm yeah. just Dortman from Dortmund. 1964's Dalek Invasion of Earth. The name just won. Well, yeah, but I, I again in 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 Russell's wonderful, wonderful, much improved Brave New World. I'm guessing he probably cancelled Dortman as well, but I guess he'd find something wrong with him. Uh, he, 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 the fact that he dies, um, he because he, he was making bombs. With that, you know, I, I <laughs> think Russell can clearly find problems in just about anything. It, it, you know, he's off the scale. And so we're a problem. Yeah, every, yeah, everybody's a problem to Russell, I think, truth be told. I, I don't know what, I, I genuinely don't know what kind of world he would want to live in it, but it's not the world I want to live in. Well, anyway. talk about Dortmund. How, how about this fella, Dr. Judson? He turns evil when he stands up. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he he does. Brain, really. yeah. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. What am I supposed right. to make of so, that? <laughs> but that's 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 what I say about Doctor Who. Look at that monster; it's so wonderful. Do you know what I mean? Is, like you, yeah. in science yeah. fictions now, you get kind of creatures, but they kind of look aesthetically they look human. even though that yeah, they look aesthetically yeah. pleasing. But Doctor Who always went for the ugly, the ugly yeah. monster. Yeah. Look how ugly yeah. this is! It's yeah. wonderful, you know. Yeah. But again, Sadly, I think I think we're in a time now though where the people that can actually write decent scripts for science fiction yeah. is in a very, very small percentage. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you just got to look at, you know, the main ones, your, your Star Treks, your Star yeah. Wars, even your Marvels and how they've fallen now. It's just, they're two steps away now, I think, from breaking the fourth wall in their episodes and just literally telling you how bad you are to the camera. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think also, that happened, John. That happened in Orphan 55. That's literally oh, what happened at the end of the episode. <laughs> Wait, you say that name. <laughs> but no, um, the thing is with villains is that they, like the hero, have some sort of uh, fallibility. They have some sort of um, chink in their armour that you can take advantage of. If you make them just as strong as the hero... You know that that's just, it's and 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 is impossible to you know even even look at you know trying to find their Achilles heel. 
you know, it, they're, they're boring. They're yeah. absolutely boring. And, you know, I just, <laughs> I mean, I'd love, I came up with a character that was in an iron lung, you know. It's, well, that's it's, no good. You can't have that. No, no. Well, that's the <laughs> yeah. point. That's the point. It was all about his mind, though. That's the his thing. But, and so, you know, you've got to think. A lot of people just go, oh, you know, if they're disabled, there's something wrong with their brains or something like that. But the, there's, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong. And, and we can well, see that in Davros, you know. Well, he makes the most killing, the, the advanced killing machine in the world, you know. Yeah, or in the, the universe. universe. Yeah. I mean, the other yeah. thing that's interesting is that I don't know whether whether anybody's noticed, I feel sure you have, that loads and loads of Hollywood films always cast uh, white English males as the villains. Yes. They just, yeah. for whatever just... reason, English actors, and I'm talking English, not Scottish, not Welsh, yeah. English actors make very good villains. And well, look, then, in that case, you... it's the... I, I, I could take describe offense to that. It's, it's <laughs> the Rickman, the Rickman effect. Hans. If that's, that's yeah. what we call it. Uh, Sam friend. in the live yeah. chat reminds us that Davros was evil before the accident. He, he didn't was. become evil because yeah. of the chair. Did anyone uh, notice Harrington. like he had a he had a hunchback too when he was human? He had a hunchback. <laughs> I think that's like, the so actor. Why he look? <laughs> and it's like, dude, you're having a go at people with spider <laughs> bifida? Shakespeare, it's yeah. Shakespearean actor trying to do his Richard the Third thing. You know, at the moment, at the yeah. moment, I'm at the place where I'm somebody who has spoken at length about how much I love Russell T Davies' work, how much faith I had in him, how pleased I was in his um, getting hold of Doctor Who again with Julie Gardner and Phil Collinson and Bad Wolf, generally speaking. And I still have a reasonable amount of hope for particularly the three specials, but uh, witnessing Russell. Actually running this show again, Sarah, I take no pleasure from saying this. It's a, it's very frustrating and trying my patience. One week, we get a fantastic ringmaster who, with a great sense of humour who seems to connect with the British public and knows that we want to watch this show and, and wants to give us what we want and wants to get us all in front of the, the telly together enjoying this fabulous show again. Then the next week, we get this quite frankly, arrogant prick who will shout, shoot down anybody who stands in his way, who opposes his view to any tiny degree, not necessarily dramatically opposed. He has to shoot them down right away because I'm Russell T. Davis. This pomposity, oh, no. that, a pomposity that I just cannot sign off on at, at, this, at this point. I, I can't help but feel that I'd like to think that Julie Gardner, or somebody he respects and loves, is whispering in his ear and saying, no, mate, perhaps you should think twice about this. But right now, I wouldn't want to put money on it. That's what's so different from mm. 2005 Russell T Davies to now. In 2005, it was a different time. The shackles were on him. Yeah. Whereas now I find that since mm -hmm. he's come back, the shackles are off. He can do whatever he wants. Well, he's never, he's not had a failure. Can't. And maybe he needs one just to dent yeah. that ego a bit. No, he's gone, you know on, what, Sarah, he's gone just, on from success to success. I, I he's don't surrounded by, I wonder, maybe they are sick of fans. How many people on this production team, with the possibility, with the exception of Julie and Jane, are saying, well, so we need to. Just, yeah, let's calm oh, down back. a bit. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, my God, Russell's employed me. You know, I must buy that. I'm so sure he's like that. I'm so sure he's so starstruck that it probably helps that he's aligned with everything. But, you know, all these young actors, like the great and powerful RTD, well, you know, they published that list. Speak. They published that list, but, didn't they, Sarah? It was less than a year ago, and in the most powerful people in British television, I think Russell was at number five, something like that. He was, he was yeah. really up there. He's got nobody to say, you know, to challenge him. And again, I, I hate this side because he keeps saying he's a fan of the show. He's watched it since he was four. He loved it. And and I, and I thought he did, but when he comes out, I don't like this side to him. I don't want him to be an arrogant prick. That's exactly how he said When he said, I say, this is how we see Davos. I was like, no, no. So I respectfully disagree. And and I really love the guy. I, I do. And I do think he's talented. But yeah, I can't get behind this at all. 
I hate to see it. He's, he's, I, I, I mean, I, for me, he used to come across as arrogant and pompous right back in the David Tennant days when he would be, do interviews on, on Confidential. I, I, I found it quite unwatchable and, and stomach churning to see his degree of pomposity and arrogance that is apparent. Maybe he isn't. Maybe maybe he's a completely different person to how he comes across. Always, that. I think he always seemed like somebody who had, who had an, a massive reserve of self-belief. Well, um, well, and a huge ego, and an enormous, yeah. enormous ego. And again, I could be wrong, and I'm sorry if I'm doing you a disservice, uh, 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 Russell, but that's how you come across, at least. And certainly this interview, in one minute, in one minute on that interview on Unleashed, he comes across as one of the most arrogant, pompous, up-himself people that I've ever had the misfortune to listen to for a minute. I also want to bring out, you know, all they said about children in need and being inclusive and that, that otherness and how we need to, you know, think about this otherness. Well, what are you doing, Russell? You've basically just said anybody who's against you, you've called them names. Yeah. You said they're going to have lonely, sad lives. You, you, you're, you know, you're not practicing what you preach, are you? But the thing that the thing that I find as well particularly ridiculous about this, and I and Sarah, you pointed this out to us earlier on in today when we were all madly communicating backwards and forwards, and this was that Russell T Davies himself created prime example Lunic in mm. in the in the Cybermen two parter. Mm. Let's think about it. What was oh, that's right, Lumic was in a wheelchair. Now I know that he didn't write those episodes. Mm-hmm. But, he, no. but it's his story. He is there. He's the head writer. He's the showrunner. Mm-hmm. So, are you comfortable with that, Russell? The fact that you well, that you, that, that didn't you they put him in a wheelchair to... because he had a broken a- a leg? Um, yeah, the, the, the actor, actor Roger mm-hmm. Lloyd Pack did have an accident shortly before filming, so it was rewritten to put him in a wheelchair. But, but they could. Maybe it was his contract. Maybe they could have recast. I, I would never. You know, I love Roger Lloyd, Lloyd Pack. I thought he, I thought he was a fabulous actor. I'm glad he was in Doctor Who. But uh, yeah, uh, even so, on screen it manifests like this. It's uh, exactly it is uncomfortable. You, you know, you you have to sort of still carry the can, however much it might be that he's broken his leg. We still that the, they have put out a mainstream broadcast program on primetime Saturday night television saying exactly what Russell is saying. We shouldn't be saying so. Maybe they should have adjusted the the the, the shooting schedule so that they could change it so that he was no longer in a wheelchair. And of course they shouldn't. No, Russell, of course you shouldn't because there's nothing wrong with it. And so leave yeah. Davros alone. Just realise that things happen for a yeah. reason, sometimes not for a reason. But you just don't have to go into this yeah. degree of yeah. depth. Well, again, Simon, Lumit wasn't defined by a wheel. Yes, he was in a wheelchair, but, you know, he was dying. That, 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 that informed part of it. It was his will to survive. Uh, and he cast, and again, like Davros, he knew better. This is how he thinks mm-hmm. this human should be. But uh, it was his attitude, it was his mind, it was his will. The, to say it was just John Lumley in a wheelchair does an incredible disservice to the character. Yeah. It, but it's like F- SFX magazine yeah, two weeks yeah. ago. I mean, going back to, you know, his, his ego, he, he commented in there that he came back because he felt the show needed to be protected. He's not he's not wrong. It's he, the fans, he's, you know. He's not wrong. He wasn't wrong about that, to be fair. But I I in light of recent events, I can see why you would look at that material and think probably. Oh, he probably okay. means he wants to protect um, the Jody error, probably. Yeah, That's he's a cocky. That was commented in it as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that some people were yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, they, we, we won't open the whole Jody box, I think. But <laughs> if um yes, so if your appetite has been whetted, you're wondering what we've talked been speaking about. It's uh, Destination Scarrow, that uh Minnesota, Doctor Who Minnesota that was put out for Children in Need Day 2023, 24 hours ago on the 17th of November 2023 there. Uh, it was written by Russell T. Davis and starred David Tennant and some other bloke, uh, along with uh, Julian Bleach. And it had some music by Murray Gold, which is going to take me a little while to get my head around that. But it's still up on the iPlayer, and it's there for at least a year for you to uh, rewatch on YouTube uh, to your little hearts content there. And it's obviously it's up on the YouTube channel as well. But they 
it's yeah on iPlayer is sort of the official way to go and watch these things, isn't it? Yeah. So um, mm. this is uh, the opening shot fired. My God, I can barely consider it. The opening shot fired to uh, Doctor Who's 60th anniversary season, uh, bringing about the all new era of Doctor Who with the 14th Doctor played by David Tennant. We get to see the first full length instalment of the event series next Saturday, the 25th of November on BBC One and on Disney Plus internationally. It's called The Star Beast and it stars David Tennant, Catherine Tate, Yasmin Finney, Jacqueline King and uh, Miriam Margulies as the voice of Beep the Meep. Whoever else is going to turn up in that, heaven only knows, just seven days until we find out. Obviously, that'll be followed by further instalments, Wild Blue Yonder on Saturday, the 2nd of December, and The Giggle closes it all out a week later on Saturday, the 9th of December. Make sure you uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, check you're still subscribed, and hit the close to bell to get the notifications because we're going to be talking about it all here on Type 40 and Type 40 Live. How could we not? It's Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. We've been waiting for this a very, very long time. There's still a lot to play for. It's not over yet, but obviously this has been a major setback for anybody who's interested in the resurgence, the restoration, and the endurance of Doctor Who into the future. It's all well and good to put on a great anniversary, but if it's not going to be followed up with a robust series of its own identity that's going to be roundly entertaining, then quite frankly, what's the point? I'm Leela of the 17, and you should watch Titanfall. <laughs> she said it. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's oh. like it's like the night before your wedding, and you've tried on your wedding dress, and you've looked down. The night before the wedding, there's, <laughs> and there's you know you're trying it on, you know, and, it's all right. and you look down and you realise you stood in shit. <laughs> and and your wedding, that's what it. That's what it. And it's like in your so nice white like, dress. <laughs> in your nice white dress, and, and now it's like, yeah, how quick can you get rid of the stain? Is it Brilliant. going to stay? Is it a deep stain or is it a superficial stain? I didn't realise how and deep you were. We'll Sorry. I didn't realise how deep you were, Sorry. Oh, wait. <laughs> I just, yeah. Yeah. We'll end it on that, shall we, guys? <laughs> I'm not bombshell. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. One. Yes. Uh, well, uh, listen, it's, um, I I hope David Tennant's watching, obviously. Uh, we, we know at least one doctor is subscribed to us here at Type 40. But I would like to think that if David Tennant caught that, he might realise that I, he's probably dropped the ball there on that one. And uh, as, no, a, big fan, as no, a big David Tennant fan, as a big David Tennant fan, I'd like I'd like to think that perhaps no, he thinks he doesn't give a shit. That, that he may have got that yeah. one wrong. Uh, as a bit of a white pill, though, for us and for David, we're rounding things off with a last look at the view screen, right up your temporal schism in search of the prettiest pictures out there in the universe to remind us why why Davros matters, why there's been hashtag Davros Day trending on Twitter. Even oh, Twitter God. thinks that Russell has dropped the dropped a bollock on this one. Uh, first of all, we've got this from Springfield Punks. <laughs> Davros. Brilliant. Done Springfield style. This is an oldie, oh, but it's this. a goodie. It's a brilliant yeah. thing. Brilliant. This that, picture's that been awesome. doing the rounds for years, Ian. Have you ever seen this line of... No, I haven't, before? but it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I love love how he's got three fingers, just like Springfield's. <laughs> the <laughs> president of Springfield. Yeah, and Chief Wiggum in with him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There he is. Yeah, what an evil sod. And that's how we like our Davroses, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. E I love evil, that, I love evil. that snarl he's got as well. Yeah, that's really exactly. well done. It's very, very very Davros. Davros. It's, um, it, you it's have to shame because it makes you realise what we've lost, what Russell, bless you, have taken away from us. Because that design, I know we're looking at a cartoon here, but that design is just magnificent. Mm -hmm. That the way it, it, you know, he just looks like half a Dalek. It looks like you've just taken yeah. the top of a Dalek and you're looking at the news and it's like it's a brilliant, brilliant piece of, of, of well, aesthetic. Well, I'm design. sure that I'm sure that Matt will agree with me when when I say that you know, as a as a cartoonist, I mean, this is how you know when you're working with this stuff, Matt, how much you can yeah. par it down like that and to change it and to bend it and to just make it that bit more hyper real for it still to be recognisably Davros. It, it's a fantastic creation. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's it. And I remember um, when uh, Moffat did, um, you know, had had the eyes opened and it was, and 
it's you know people tried to forget that you know because yeah. it was just so stupid you yeah, know that was. was the whole point of the middle yeah. eye you know yeah. but um you know it's it, this is this is really good i do like the simpsons esque um feel to a lot of a lot of things even especially when they do doctor who well, um, I'd even watch a show. It's more Futurama than anything, and that's that's yeah. okay by yeah. me. What are cosplay people going to do? Because when I was at Comic Con, I met three people that was dressed like um... El Carrion, and of course, oh, and it's like Austin Russell. This, this is what Russell Davros doesn't understand. Just have to be an ordinary person. <laughs> so yeah, this this is what Russell and lots of people before him don't mm. understand. Yeah, he he yeah. may be the current custodian of the show. But the fans own Doctor Who, and he ought to know that. Yes. He was one of us all through the wilderness years, but he's forgotten. He's disappeared up his own temporal this schism. Is the I, I, is. Spot on, Dan. Yeah. Mm. I'm really well, starting to feel that way. So, a fabulous piece of classic fan art there from Springfield Punks. But let's hammer it home even more, shall we, with this crochet? Little <laughs> oh, little I love that. Oh, Russell, I want that. What are you doing to us? <laughs> oh, love so it. Should Davros be cute? No. It's that little blue eye at the top. It is, yeah. yeah. It's adorable. I wonder how long it took an old lady to to knit that one. (laughs) I wonder how long. (laughs) You can buy these on Etsy. I'll get the link for anybody who wants it. If you want to pick up one of these. Sales sales of these will go through the roof following what does. Again, look, even just a simplified knitting pattern, a crocheting pattern, that look is iconic. Yeah, it just shows how As iconic you... is that everybody is doing these these art pieces and mm. they're people love Davros. Yeah, Davros is a classic now, villain. As you know, I don't get into the habit of plugging other shows and channels and stuff on this show. But if I want to point you in the direction of a place that I feel has a very similar sort of approach to uh, commenting on on pop culture generally and Doctor Who. I want to give a plug to the Galactic Girls and they're fabulous. Galactic Girls! I love them. They're really cool. You should watch them, seriously. Yeah, I can't recommend that show highly enough. Very much the spirit of what we've been about at Type 4 to hear all all these years. And, uh, yeah, I say happy Doctor Who Day to to you both and ev- all of your regular panelists as as well. I do hope to team up with the Galactic Gals at some point in the future. But for the time being, happy 60th anniversary to you all. I hope you find something good to watch. Uh, brilliant people love the Davros. Is so cute, says Kelly. I, yeah, I agree. Very very cute. But at the other end of the scale here, we've got this fabulous one. Now this. I don't want to put words in a fabulous artist's mouth, uh, but this was posted today by by uh, Daryl Joyce, who's just put out the uh, the what's the book called the the Fantastic it's, Journey book. Uh, it's the um, bear with me, and I will get it for you, and I'll tell you. I do apologise. Now, obviously, this is an illustration of a pivotal moment from Genesis of the Daleks. Mm-hmm. Hammering home, uh, I'm sure that you know because Daryl has offered no commentary with this; he just happened to share it. In the last few hours, it's the illustrated journey. Sixty years. The illustrated journey. It's a magnificent piece of work, and that obviously is the uh, is the painting that goes with the Genesis of the Daleks. Magnificent. It is. It's. I mean, I mean, look at the colours on Davros's. Well, chair. We're calling it now. Oh, what a life support system! That's what we're calling it. (laughs) But this does reimagine that moment in in a kind of three hundred and sixty way. And and evokes the actual episode beautifully, whilst giving Daryl, as always, enough room for his imagination to to, to sort of play to frolic. Daryl, if you're watching, as I say, uh, Daryl has offered no commentary with this. No. Uh, but um, well, I don't think he needs to. Dan, does it? I think no. I think we all know what he's saying. I, say, and, yeah. I, think, I think it says it all. Really, is that is that I actually hand painted? Hand painted? Is it hand painted? Yeah, it's an of, oh no, no, this one is hand painted. He does mm. do traditional and digital stuff, but you're right, mate. Nice. It's hand painted. Yeah, it's great. It's absolutely great. Oh, yeah, I'm getting goosebumps just looking at that because it's so evocative of Genesis. <laughs> Look at this yeah. comment from Matthew Pound, Sarah. That would make a great jigsaw. It, it, it <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The fans are doing the best work, says Mark Milford. Oh, very yeah. couldn't agree as, more. Al- as always, Mark. As yeah, always. the problem is Russell is a fan, let's not forget. Russell yeah. is a fan, <laughs> supposedly. Exactly, Lenny. I agree with what yeah, Lenny sorry, says. Lenny. He's, he's imposing <laughs> his own his own canon on the damn thing. Everything <laughs> Lenny says, I, I stand by yeah. every bar. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got this one. This is um, hand-drawn again. And this is by 
De, uh, Denis Louis Fernandez de Silva, and it's mm. it says no more at the top. We've got the War Doctor and his companion there. From uh, this is from that book that they put out, which I've forgotten the name of. But oh, yeah, I there that was he is. Doom. No, some. Um, no, no, wash no, your it's mouth just, out, Matt Park. It's just a <laughs> word. It took a and minute got, for the mic to drop. <laughs> what I like about this, what I like about this, Matt, is we've got the lettering in the sunbeams there: seek, locate, destroy, exterminate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's done in a very graphical way. Uh, I don't know how old uh, Denny is, but I think this is really beautifully done. Nice yeah, use of use gorgeous. of crayons, and it just goes to show, really, what the, why I was attracted to this was because it, it's obviously a child's drawing and you think well this child he's drawn davros with a big a big smile on his face mm -hmm. and i just think that this is it's all well and good for russell to feel the way he does now in 2023 or the way he thinks he should feel more appropriately but his own work informed this person to create this fan art has he yes. really done any harm mm -hmm. think about that russell think awesome. about that to finish off, we've got to finish with something off, something cute as well, haven't we? How about this? A lovely oh. fuzzy little oh. thing. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. That's really fun. I really love this. Nice so what do you work. think? Is it, <laughs> I mean, the, skirt's definitely, the skirt is definitely leather, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Oh, so is the body, yeah. The body I love, I love that, that that's what Matt was drawn to. That that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, I've been on a few Always Tinder like dates. Always like a skirt. <laughs> yeah. like a skirt. <laughs> Let's not go there. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this this reminds me, John, of Cuddly Toys back in the 70s and the and the 80s, before it, before people tried to go for screen accuracy and before the rise of the dreaded pop vinyl. Yeah, you were covered in them on your bed, weren't you? Didn't mind. You had about 50 on yeah. your bed, or was that just me? Didn't mind the pop no, vinyl. No, no, it was no, just you. the fact that the Doctor Who ones, they went, they went to the, they, they got the wrong license. <laughs> I like that. And that's I what like killed that them. One. I like that one as well because it's almost climbed back into the frame to say "stuff you, Russell." I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I think what this goes to show is that Davros is beloved across all age yeah. ranges, and yeah. he shouldn't be messed with. The only thing I is, you, you can't hug hug it, can you? Because you've got that metal thing that goes across yeah. his head. Plus, you've got that thing smack in the middle of his honestly, of his face. So when you squish honestly, it, honestly, I'm hoping good. never to see Davros again in in R2D's era at Me all. Me too. Yeah. And isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame that we now hope that our yeah. favourite characters don't appear yeah. in our favourite show? I have a horrible feeling. I'll go on record here. I have a horrible feeling that it, Julian Bleach's Davros, as we saw him last night, will be back in the not too soon. Probably. Future. I so, wonder whether it'll be in, in the second special. I don't know. I just have this horrible feeling yeah. we've got a lot more to come from this new Davros because Russell is is is, is nailing his colours to the mass here. He's making a very, very deliberate yeah. baiting statement. And yeah. I think he'll just run with it, to hey, be honest. Guys, can I ask a question about children in need? Do, you, do they yeah. get paid for that? Is no. are the actors and that paid for no, that, or they, is it still free? Children, we need. You know, they don't. They don't get paid. Uh, right. Uh, the the presenters, uh, the presenters of the of the event on the night, people like Dermot O'Leary, they get paid. Yeah, yeah really? I know. I, I, I yeah. really yeah. rather not answer that one. I don't think oh, that's wow. a simple answer. Because I remember Colin Baker, like the the famous one with him being in Dimensions and Time, saying, "Oh, they got me back I in this get... damn suit, and I did. I'm doing it for yeah. free." He goes, "Yeah, nobody doing that would have been got paid, and 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 Tennant and Bleach, and they they weren't paid for it. I guarantee that. But oh, the I people who Bleach do the may, hosting may come back. You're right, Simon." I don't know. Maybe I don't he's know. already been paid. I really so would like to, to say on that. Wow, I, I think didn't. I, I thought no that could be right. Paid. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Well, I don't know how they can justify that when they get such a good salary as it I, is. I, I suspect, well, I, I suspect, and I don't know on this one at all. I must be honest, but I suspect it's just all within their contract. Right. Um, so, so it's not that they're getting paid any more specifically oh, for I doing see. that yeah. one no, event, okay. but it's within the production block. So, I, I, see. I think you're in, Simon. I think you're right about, um, you know, Bleach. Uh, I, I think, think I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think you'll be the specials, know. but I think 
I think there's a very good possibility he's going to be in a shooty series. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Well, even though Russell has I'm said, well, I, I tell you what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get another, open another hoop of conversation because we won't <laughs> okay. be able to close it. But um, yeah, we are back. That's the good news is that we are back with more Type 40 live very, very soon. Of course we are. What should people do? Let's let's bring him back on and uh, see what he's got to say. Don't be ableist. If oh, you've got to go, mate. Sorry. You're if Davros says you're welcome, yeah. everybody's welcome here at Type what a 40. Fantastic and Type costume. 40 it was fantastic. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Please like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Check you're still subscribed and hit the cloister bell so you get all the notifications about everything that we're doing next across Type 40 and Type 40 live podcasts and live streams here. We've been celebrating all month, November, as the Countdown to the Event series continues. And we've got a few more surprises and treats up our sleeve on the podcast in particular. So That's don't good. miss our chat with Tony Farrell. That was fabulous. He was yeah. great Big company. Tea. Yay. Hey, Tony. Very so informative. Very informative stuff. And there's more Whovember videos coming. But uh, the one with John Yulden, come to think of it, John, I can't remember what we talked about. But I know it was fun because yeah, we, we had you back. Fun. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the tip of the iceberg, of course, with the 60th anniversary itself. There's lots of things that have been revealed in the last few days. We'll get around to it all on Type 40 Live. This Thursday, of course, we've got the Daleks in colour to look forward to. But we may pop up here and there. Depends which surprises. Oh, for better or worse, turn up courtesy. <laughs> oh, oh, no you surprises. surprised the right way. No more surprises. We've had a lot of people watching Type 40 Live and commenting on this edition of the show. Lots of people new to the channel too. Thank you very much. And yeah, please, if you haven't already, please like the video. It, it matters and helps a lot, lot more than you yeah. think. All like these people subscribe. watching, a Come fraction on. of people, a fraction of people hit the like button. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, check you're still subscribed, and hit the bell to get the notifications. Because Gary we'll will be back. Some... Gary will be back, by the way. So, you know, <laughs> make sure you which... subscribe. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's about 20 people who just stopped watching when Gary went off. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to say a thank you to Charlotte Shields, as always, for her company and some really mo moving words and and uh, bang on takes, as always, from Charlotte. Yeah. Thank you again to Gary Beekler of nerdrotic.com. I suspect you probably thank know you, where sir. to find him already. But it, yeah, it was uh, fantastic to have you back on the show. So I hope it's not two years again till the next time. And if you want Gary to come back, you go and pester him, go and remind <laughs> go and pester him by all means. But yeah, it's great to hear his perspective and particularly that answer about the, the Disney Plus ratings because I've been wondering that yes. for a little while. You, obviously, you know where to find Gary's on, on YouTube and across all major platforms too. Uh, John, your first live stream here with us, mate. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's, it, it would be better if it, was, if it was to talk about something nice, wouldn't it, or something we liked. <laughs> it was great fun. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll have some nice things to talk about in the future. <laughs> we have, we yeah, have indeed. We've been hatching, we've been hatching <laughs> a few plans, haven't we? Matt, obviously real life time traveller. Already, it's Sunday for you. How's the day looking so far? What have we got, what have we got to look forward to in the future? Uh, it's very busy, but there's still no Is flying cars. Bugger. Damn Plenty it. Of Damn it. Though. <laughs> one day, everybody, one day, one day he'll say, yeah, we've got flying cars today, Dan. Everything, everything's fine. I'm always disappointed. I've been disappointed since 2015. Same here. <laughs> should have the spinners running around, shouldn't we? Should have the spinners. Yeah. yeah we've we've got, got another cool. legend in the live chat, Tony <laughs> Farrell. He's been in. <laughs> Yay, Tony. Tony. The big, the tree. Yeah, big. <laughs> tea. Here he is. Thank, again, thank you, Tony, for that fabulous animation there. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Ian David awesome. Diaz, as always. Thank you to Hello. you, mate. No worries. And to Starry Eyed Girl and her a compliment, her teddy bears picnic there yeah, behind. The Even teddy if... bears are going back in the loft now, ready for the Christmas stuff. Don't forget Simon and Lenny. Yeah. I, as <laughs> if I could. I'm just getting round to them. Yes, because people in the live chat obviously are all over Lenny, like a rash, just like he's all over Simon's he's, chin. He's, he's been the whole here the whole time. He's literally chewed so many holes he's, he's in his bed. Mother didn't say about it. it. It's it's about it. Just, <laughs> it's falling apart. There's That's what happens when you make 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't thank you all enough for your company, Simon. Thanks for coming on. I know it was a tester for you, but I, I, I do hope it's helped. helped. Thank you, uh, Simon. Well, yeah, the therapy, seriously, Dan, you said the th- it might be good therapy. It's been excellent therapy because oh, I just cool. feel so much happier now for the, having all talked about it and we all feel the same and it's yeah. all good. Mm. Thank you. Well, you, you knew As you weren't always, alone. <laughs> as always if you're an artist a fan artist you know a fan artist and they've got a nice Davros picture or well, they've made Davros out of I don't know bits of old hmm. woodland or whatever whatever they've done to recapture the glory of the proper Davros send it our way or send them our way we'll get it up on the view screen and remind Russell T Davis that this time he's got it wrong in a pretty big way yeah, more coming up on Type 40 Live later in the week. Make sure you're subscribed, everybody. Or you can head over to our social medias, Instagram and X, at Type 40 Doctor Who. Come and join us there. Uh, retweet us, repost us, I should say, about how much fun you've had in our company. And, uh, yeah, I think, we've, I think we've covered this topic as generously as we could. But please share the video out onto social media too. Don't keep going for another hour. I bet you, yeah, I've heard that about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it last, Dan. <laughs> but yeah, he's on the old blue pill, aren't you, mate? And uh, yes, yeah, so you can also join you us. Don't need that. Look <laughs> in, in the Type 40 Facebook group. That's where you'll find regenerations upon regenerations worth of Doctor Who fans talking about the classic show, remembering all the glory days and proper when proper Davroses were around, and talking about new Doctor Who too, created by or brought to the screen by this guy who's on the friggin' naughty step big time. And we're all looking forward, generally speaking, I think we're all still looking forward to all new Doctor Who uh, with the 14th and 15th Doctor coming not long afterwards uh get the tarts in get the jaffa cakes in it's not exactly get the rusks in <laughs> get the rusks in you know, none of it's compulsory but it is all recommended to enjoy our company here at type 40 life we'll have to actually we have to get jaffa cakes in next week won't I we keep saying no. oh, if shooty turns up uh, with jaffa uh, cakes James he's tart, been watching please. Type 40. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite sure exactly what's coming next and when it's coming, but obviously it is Doctor Who Day coming up. We've been here every single Doctor Who Day since Type 40 Live began. Actually, before that on the Type 40 podcast, too, we've always done Doctor Who Day. So, of course, we're going to be here. But make sure you do hit that notification bell and get yourself subscribed. Thank you so much for your company, everybody. Uh, get your gams round a few tarts and enjoy... The rest of the anniversary, surely, surely things can only get better. We always have the That's time the if song. you have the space here at Type 40 Live. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you all.